Hello guys, my name is DJ Ola7 Owen, we're Kwama Dondo the Chief, and my show here on your number one podcast show in the land, the Ola7 Podcast Show. This segment is called On The Spot, where we get to interact with all, you know, people from all walks of life, right? Uh, politicians, soccer stars, musicians, actors, you name them. And uh, tonight on this uh, program, I am hosting, uh, I'm joined by one of the most prominent politicians, uh, politicians we have in Zimbabwe. His name is uh, Gift. Ostalos Asiziwa, my brother. Welcome to the program. How are you? I'm very well. Hola, thank you for having me. Great. It's quite an honor to, to have you on this uh, on this platform. And I know a lot of people have been asking, Ola, please just invite uh, Ostalos. We want to hear more about Ostalos. We want to know more about him. And finally, uh, you are here, my brother. I understand you were born on uh, February tw- um, 24, 1993 uh, in Chawalala. So how was life like, you know, growing up? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I grew up in the ghetto uh, in, in Chabalala, mm-hmm. which is uh, in uh, Bulawai province. I went to school there mm-hmm. uh, in Mashabazulu Primary School, mm-hmm. and then proceeded um, to go to the high school and uh, later uh, university here in Salisbury. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that um, uh, this life, Obviously, in the ghetto, inspired me as a young person mm-hmm. uh, because you know that uh, life, you know, as a young person in the ghetto is a bit difficult. Mm-hmm. You know, everything we had uh, and we have today, we had to build it ground up. Mm-hmm. You know, struggling uh, and 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 finding our way mm-hmm. up uh, and leading to us going into the university, and that's why, you know, we are where we are today. Mm-hmm. We we understood uh, the mission. Mm-hmm that we, we, we have to change the ghetto. Uh, we don't have to change ourselves. <laughs> you have, have to, to change, change the ghetto. The ghetto mm-hmm. and change the concrete realities mm-hmm. of our brothers and sisters um, whom we grew up with mm-hmm. and whom today uh, we, we represent. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that's just my life. Uh, wow. That's how I grew up. Interesting. So there's a little information about your marital life. You know, uh, are you married in maybe, if yes, how many kids? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, not, I'm not yet married. Uh-huh. Uh, I believe in the institution of marriage. Okay. Uh, I believe that is important. Mm-hmm. Um, many times in the prosecution of our struggle, um, we, we tend to forget <laughs> the, the material questions. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Know, of, of finding ourselves in the institution of marriage. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an important step. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, when I was young, I thought that when I get to 30, mm-hmm. but when I got to 30, there was an election. <laughs> In my country, and I thought yes. that I would do it after election. After election. You know, um, and, and uh, when the election happened, I thought, I know I would do it when we were in government. Ah. So it's, it's been a postponement, but uh, who one day be able so to So maybe you get married later on when you are in government? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah. So for now, he's off the market, uh, but not yet off, off, off the market, but it's just, you know, temporarily off the market. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so during your speech at, um, at the Barack Obama Foundation in 2022, you said you were born to a gardener and um, a housemaid. Uh, to what extent was your upbringing influenced the person you are today, Ostalis? Uh, look, um, this uh, shaped the important um, ideological inclination and value system mm-hmm. at my disposition because um, growing up with my mother, uh, going in the suburbs, um, um, you know, to go and work um, for the middle class mm-hmm. and white people um, obviously was a difficult thing because mm-hmm. also having your father mm-hmm. coming from the countryside and coming to work for a white man who mm-hmm. was named Peter, um, you know, as a gardener, you know, is something that you would not be proud of. Mm. You know, I, I think I started to speak about my father's profession when, when he got a job in National Foods. Before mm. then, you wouldn't speak you know, uh, with so much proud yes. and pride about the profession of your parents. Mm. You know, that mm. when you're in primary school, they ask you, <laughs> you know, uh, at, at times you, you would want to lie. <laughs> it's a, maybe and say, my, my father is a policeman. <laughs> you know, um, um, uh, but, you know, uh, those difficult realities shaped who we are today. Mm. Because poverty, uh, we never read about it in books. We lived poverty. Yes. I understand what it is to struggle and, and what it is to wake up at the blessing of an empty stomach. Mm-hmm. 
So it shaped who I am uh, today because when I went to university, I was privileged to get a scholarship um, mm -hmm. funded by yes, a Dr. Strive Masiwa. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was a critical stage of my life because it what changed me. Yeah. But when I went to university, despite that, we, we became the privileged class because the Joshua Nkomo Scholarship uh, then uh, it was a lucrative scholarship. Mm -hmm. it, you, they, they think you are the brightest yes. students, so they give you a time, they, they, they pay for your accommodation, you are... You're almost at work yes, because they will, everything. they will pay you every month. Yeah. So, but I then did not forget, you know, my background. Mm -hmm. So that's why in university we started to speak for and on behalf of the underprivileged mm -hmm. and students who could not afford. Yeah. Because I understood that uh, even if I'm here uh, living in, in, in Mount Pleasant, uh, th there are people who cannot afford mm. this decent life yeah. that I was affording as a student. Mm -hmm. So, so my background really of uh, you know, having these challenges, having to work in a grinding mill, mm -hmm. you know, where my father was trying to then become an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you know, but it couldn't thanks to uh, Mugabe's government. Mm -hmm. But he attempted so well to try to be an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. some of us then had to become a cheap labor and mm. in fact we were free labor <laughs> uh, to my father. Yeah. So, so this background then shaped me because it, it, it instilled in me an understanding that we, we have to have a society that works for everyone. Mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't want to live the life that I yeah. lived. I don't want my kids mm -hmm. to live the life uh, that I lived. So, so this shaped me uh, then and it continues to shape you know, my journey mm -hmm. as I traverse wow. you know, in terms of making sure that we, we, we fight for a life mm -hmm. and a decent you know, life mm -hmm. for every Zimbabwean, yeah. regardless of where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone just deserves a better life. So what motivated you to venture into politics and uh, at what age, you know, um, apart from being in politics, what else do you do? Uh, so I, I, when I went to university, uh, I was introduced to the Students' Union. Mm. I'm an avid reader of our history. Mm -hmm. So I used to read about Len Mojong. I used to read about October. Seven. So these events were inspiring us as history students mm -hmm. in high school. And the desire for many young people then was that you must go to the University of Zimbabwe. Mm. <laughs> that you must get sufficient points because we felt that only the University of Zimbabwe yeah. uh, 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 could, could, could make us to be who we should be. Mm -hmm. So we, with this zeal, so when we went to university, we, we, we started to study. But during our studies, we saw some the comrades coming in, wearing berets, <laughs> chanting slogans, and we said, ah, but these are the people that we're reading about. Exactly. Perhaps we might uh, yeah. want to talk to them. Mm -hmm. And then I, I talked to them. I didn't know how to introduce myself mm. because you're not a card. Yeah. You don't know how to salute you know, comrades. <laughs> I just introduced myself. And I told them that, uh, you know, comrades, I, I want to be involved in this mm. fight. Mm. You know, um, and they were demonstrating. So we joined and we became victims because we then chucked out, but we we're first years, mm -hmm. you know. So it just motivated us. We, mm -hmm. we then became graduates yeah. in the struggle for academic freedom. Mm -hmm. You know, from there, it was a difficult terrain because I was in a scholarship funded by Econet mm -hmm. and, and the university was moving back and forth mm -hmm. to have me disqualified from the scholarship from participating because of that, for the, oh. in activism. Mm -hmm. You know, and I had to try to strike a balance mm -hmm. To maintain my high grades in university, but at the same time participate because mm -hmm. a, a burning thing in me <laughs> kept pushing, you know, that we must demonstrate, mm. we must we must just speak out. Yes. You know, so we, we moved from that fight, from fighting for bones mm -hmm. and soup in the university. Yes. And we introduced into the real fight. You know, <laughs> Politics. You, you youngsters, you can't just fight for bones. You know, and more bread. Yeah. You must locate your struggle mm -hmm. within the broader national question. Mm. That's how we started interfacing with people like Dr. Muki and Richard Swangrai mm -hmm. and other people in the democratic family. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you know, went into the youth, uh, you know, wing, which is the youth assembly mm -hmm. of the um, MDC, MDC then. Yeah. You know, and then started to rise within the rank and file mm. of the alternative. So how old were you then when you started to be active in politics? I was 19 years. 19 years? Yeah, now you are 30... Now I'm 31. 31 years? Yeah. Wow. 
So many people think you you mimic uh, Nelson uh, Chamisa, advocate Nelson Chamisa. Uh, you know, what is your relationship with uh, with him? <laughs> the President Chamisa is my mentor. Um, um, most of us youngsters um, really emulate mm -hmm. uh, President Chamisa. Mm -hmm. We saw him from his days um, when he was a minister of ICT, mm -hmm. um, you know, performing, you know, in, in government then. And of course, in, in our party, mm -hmm. you know, he was rising within rank and file. Yes. We attracted to his youthful politics mm -hmm. and being a President Chamisa's left tenant. So he inspired some of us. Uh, we went to him for mentorship mm -hmm. uh, when he was in government. Yeah. Uh, we would go to him uh, because we're in the students' union and he was in government uh, during the government of national unity. Mm -hmm. We we'll get inspiration. You know, President Chamisa is a unique politician in the Zimbabwean party politic because he, 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 when he graduated from university, he never stopped, you know, uh, looking for more knowledge, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so for me as an academic, I was really inspired by that. When 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 we was in government, you 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 would still go with us to the University of Zimbabwe. By yeah. then he was now studying mm -hmm. um, uh, law. Yeah. So so it was an inspiration to some of us that look, he's a, he is a guy we think has arrived mm. in politics, but he thinks he still has to pursue yeah. you know academic excellence and endeavor in that mm -hmm. regard. So inspired some of us, we joined you know uh, the movement uh, because of him really. And, and now he's our president, um, you know, he mentors us. He's one person that has opened a platform for younger people. Yeah. You know, most politicians in Africa are ageists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they have so much disdain uh, for young talent uh -huh. and young people. Mm -hmm. But President Chamisa opened his arms. arms for some of us. When we were raw, you know, when we couldn't know how to yeah. address people, mm -hmm. how do you connect with the people. How do you represent the people? Mm. So as someone who has spent so much time beyond cameras, you know, behind cameras, President Chamisa Mendoz, a group of young people, mm. I'm part of that group. We meet with him from time to time, mm. and, and he takes his time because he believes that um, we must build something for the future of our children, mm -hmm. and we must build leaders for tomorrow. You know, he's one person who understands that um, um, we won't be there forever. Mm. So he's inspired in us to, to participate in leadership and become better leaders and be accountable to our people and, and be genuine and mm. authentic. So we emulate him. Uh, we are inspired by his mm. politics and we follow you know, in his footsteps. Uh, he's a very close uh, mentor and a brother to me. He's, he's a stranger that became family. Mm. So, he, so, he's, 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 so you're confirming that you sometimes mimic him. It is without doubt, Ola, when you are inspired by someone, mm -hmm. they speak to you. Yes. So you end up, they end up speaking through you. Mm -hmm. I'm the spokesperson of the alternative. And mm -hmm. when we're going into the election, I also doubled um, as a spokesperson. Mm -hmm. So it, it becomes natural mm -hmm. that you, 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 you have to, in fact, yeah. one of the greatest secrets of political communication mm -hmm. Uh, President Chamisa in the Triple C was the chief spokesperson. Mm -hmm. And me being uh, the deputy spokesperson means that you have to be in the same line. Mm. So you can't speak your mind because he's the chief spokesperson. Mm -hmm. So he speaks and we, we just bring the power of reputation. Mm -hmm. So, so are, are, are you saying you were, you were deputizing him? No, no, I was deputizing uh, Fazaima here okay. in the communications department, and he was our chief spokesperson. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense now. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, how far true is that uh, you are related to, to the wife of uh, Advocate Nessa Chamisa? <laughs> Chamisa, Chamisa, uh, Chamisa. Uh, look, uh, I've read about it <laughs> in some uh, blogs where people say, no, 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 you, you have been brought uh, into the cockpit. Yes. I'm not in the cockpit. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, on the basis that you are related to Maya Ashi, mm -hmm. the wife of our president. Yeah. I have no relationship uh, with uh, the first lady, which is biological. Mm -hmm. uh, um, besides him, I worked in the civic society mm -hmm. and she was in that space. Mm -hmm. One of the people who was very, who was known for being candid and solid and authentic. Mm -hmm. So we used to obviously meet in the civic society spaces, mm -hmm. but nothing beyond that. And um, She's someone who is also inspired, you know, um, some of us who are not yeah. yet married yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, to, to know, 
you know, uh, what to expect and to know, you know, how we must conduct ourselves. Mm. She has offered, you know, to 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 support different young people mm. in a space. So there's you know, no that relationship which is biological. No, no, no. She comes from Manikal and I come from, from Lawa. Lawa. So <laughs> Okay, there's right. nothing biological. Okay. So you were awarded, like you said earlier on, um, the Joshua Nkoma Scholarship funded by Dr. Striver Masiwa. Uh, should you not have uh, had that opportunity, do you think uh, you could have uh, reached where you are now in terms of, uh, you know, the academics? Uh, absolutely not. I think that uh, by now they've been in job bag, probably driving a quantum <laughs> or, or, you know, uh, I used to dance. Okay. Yeah, I used to dance. You're a good dancer. Uh, I'm not a good dancer, but I grew up in, in the ghetto. Mm -hmm. And South Africa is close to us, yes. so, so so we used to dance what they used to call Lama Pansula, yes. you know, at the time. So <laughs> yeah. I would be in Jobek right now, probably, if I would be alive, because mm -hmm. you know the life yeah. in Jobek. So that scholarship was a, an important turning point, mm. you know, in my life. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, it, it had to stop us from, you know, what would have been a disaster. Wow. You know, I was never someone who was you know, thinking ahead. Mm. But when you go to university, you get to be inspired. You know, the scholarship helped us a lot because mm -hmm. beyond academics, they get you a mentor into leadership. Mm -hmm. You know, they get you a mentor into business. Yes. You know, so, so and of course, more importantly, the questions of spirituality. Mm. You know, uh, you can't lead the people of God without the God of the people. <laughs> so, so at a tender age, we, we, we got to understand you know, uh, that you, it's important mm -hmm. to have a, a semblance of some religious standpoint and persuasion mm -hmm. if you are to uh, become a leader in society. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you are a former student representative committee, uh, vice president at US, UZ. What motivated you, uh, Australis, to take up that uh, position? Was it an overnight thing or it was a like, gradual, gradual process? Uh, it was never my intention to become a... Uh, the leader of the students' union. Mm -hmm. uh, my job was a writer. I used to write articles following the students' union, mm -hmm. you know, writing articles about what was transpiring mm -hmm. in the university with the very um, a terrible vice chancellor at the mm -hmm. time, Professor Nyakura, retired now, you know, um, and I used to write a lot about what was happening in the university and why it was important for students to fight, mm. um, you know. Um, so I was just a writer. Uh, and then I started to be active when one of my friends, still my friends, the Emma Komura Reservation is in the UK now, was contesting to be a president and we became part of his campaign yes. team. So, so naturally, because you're in the campaign team, you introduce the president, you know, and then people feel that, you know, um, after Makombora Reservation, you know, some of us can then come in. Yeah. You know, but uh, it was never my desire. Mm -hmm. it, it was never my intention really mm -hmm. but when the election came in uh, you know congress then said no no we think that uh, you know you you can be able to you attend qualify, you qualify to be our yeah. vice president you know and then i contested in an election heavily contested the election yeah uh, and and then we became the leadership collective mm -hmm. of the students union oh, wow <laughs> uh if you're just joining us i'm talking to ostalos uh Siziba, uh here on the all seven podcast show on the spot he's on the spot so we are just getting to know Ostalus better. So, uh, Ostalus, how did your involvement, I mean, with the Ob uh, Obama Foundation Fellowship, shape your perspective and um, influence your work? Uh, look, um, when I joined the uh, Obama Foundation Fellowship, it was through a recommendation from someone that I'd worked with mm -hmm. in the Six Society who felt that it's important for me to participate in that platform. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a very rigorous process that includes interviews, write-ups for mm. you to, to qualify. So when I when I joined the fellowship, there was COVID, so we couldn't yes. travel. Yes. We did it online. Mm -hmm. And then after um, you know doing our uh, uh, processes online, we were then invited to attend the Democrats Forum, which President Obama hosts every year. Mm -hmm. um, and then I did an interview where, you know, talking about uh, my experience in the fellowship mm -hmm. and how President Chamisa inspired, uh, President uh, uh, Obama, Obama inspired some of us, mm. you know, during the fellowship because he would interface mm -hmm. uh, with us. So, and then they felt that it's important uh, that if uh, I can join 
the fellowship and to introduce President Obama mm -hmm. and to have a, a you know a tete a tete yeah you know with him uh, to share my story mm. uh, and and share my vision as a young person mm. so it was quite an experience um, and a very important uh, milestone mm -hmm. for me as a young person and as a democratic crusader. Mm. So um, I got time to interface, uh, you know, not only with President Obama, but with, you know, uh, other uh, presidents from different countries, mm -hmm. vice presidents and other diplomats, yeah. you know, and activists that participated in the in the forum and mm -hmm. business people, uh, you know. So so it shaped, you know, uh, my midlife mm -hmm. political journey. Mm -hmm. It has opened a lot of avenues for me uh, and, of course, for the people that I work for and work with. Mm. Um, you know, it's important because we are no longer uh, in working in isolation as a country. Yes. You know, the, the world is not global. Mm. So you have to connect with the uh, working people and Democrats across the world. And I, I understand that, uh, you know, that, moment, that, that time when you went there, uh, you introduced uh, Barack Obama on... Um, on the stage during your fellowship. So in, that, is in, that was in 2022. So are you still in contact with uh, President uh, Obama? And what, what was his reaction, you know, when you, were, when you introduced him uh, onto the stage? Uh, yeah. um, obviously, they allow you to meet with him in the background mm -hmm. so that you don't panic, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, so you meet him in the background. Yes. You have conversations a bit. Mm -hmm. and, and he had read through some of my, profile, mm -hmm. so he had an understanding of what I represent, and yes. I also obviously had read about him, mm -hmm. so we had a chit chat on that, and when we went obviously to the stage, um, he confirmed to me mm. and to others mm -hmm. that he was, he was inspired, um, um, you know, um, so it, it, was, it was an incredible moment, mm. you know, for me, because I had an opportunity to tell my story, um, but to tell this Zimbabwean story, mm -hmm. because when we go out there, many people don't understand. When we go out there, we are ambassadors of our own country. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have to speak well about our country. Uh, but many people don't understand it because um, our opponents think that when we go out there, we want to speak better about our country. Mm. We, we spoke about the, I spoke about the liberation efforts mm -hmm. because it is part and parcel of our history. And we directly associate with that struggle, mm -hmm. that liberation uh, struggle that liberated our nation. And I felt that it's important to talk about it because so much disinformation had been said about some of us mm. that we, we are not patriotic, that we don't love our country. We love our country, but we're not proud of the leadership composition, but we love our country. Mm -hmm. So we spoke well, we speak well about our country. So I felt it was an important opportunity to showcase the Zimbabwean talent, but more importantly, to, to speak good about my country mm -hmm. and the journey that our country has been through mm -hmm. and the future that we envision uh, for our country. So, so it was an incredible moment and, and it, it opened up avenues, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for this Zimbabwean story, yeah. you know, to a certain extent. Are you, are you still in contact? Of course. Uh, we, I got privileged mm -hmm. to be part and parcel of um, a, a group that was formed. Yeah, um, that does uh, work uh, directly now with uh, President Obama, mm -hmm. but with people from different parts of the country. Okay, so we meet from time to time, whether virtually um, uh, or physically. Mm -hmm. Hopefully later this year. Yeah, so it's a working group. Mm -hmm. um, so some do research. There are people in business. There are people uh, in politics. Mm -hmm. There are people in the civil society. So that yes. working group is what yes, to a limited extent, kept me mm. in contact with uh, President Obama. Wow. So you were a former youth leader in the MDC party, uh, deputy spokesperson in MDC Alliance, um, you know, a position you had uh, again um, in the Citizens for Coalition Change party. Can you give us, you know, uh, Othelis, um, a, bri a brief uh, background on your political career and your, your role within the opposition party? Uh, look, I was, I was elected in 2019 when we were still in the MDC Alliance to be the Secretary General of the Youth Assembly. Mm -hmm. um, and I served there from 2019 to 2021. Mm -hmm. um, and then in 2021, I was promoted uh, by President Chamisa uh, to become the party's uh, national deputy spokesperson, mm -hmm. uh, deputizing uh, Honorable Fadzai. Mm -hmm. um, and it was obviously an experience in the Youth Assembly because 
in the youth assembly, you get an opportunity to learn and to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, so at times we newspapers for, you know, uh, 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 some of the youth activism mm. that we practice within and without yeah. the organization. Mm. So it was an important opportunity for me to learn um, and also to speak out. You know, when you are now in the then National Standing Committee of the party, mm -hmm. you, you are almost uh, put into the elite platform. Yeah. You, you cease to enjoy some of the freedoms. Mm -hmm. of, so I, I didn't become comfortable in the first days mm -hmm. because in the youth assembly, you would challenge anyone, <laughs> you, you would point a, a finger to anyone. in any leader and say, but you, uh, 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 when they, you're crossing the line, you're becoming chacharak, you know, uh, 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 or you, you do anything, you know, uh, because now you ask for forgiveness yes. since I was young. Yeah. But when you are in the uh, 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 top elite composition mm, of the it's movement, different. then you can't, you have to exercise caution, mm. Even if someone provokes you, yeah. you ought to keep it, you know. Mm -hmm. So it requires so much wisdom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the graduation was so fast for me, but I've embraced it. Mm -hmm. I've moved with it with times, mm -hmm. and I've got to learn. Um, I've, I've had so many mentors within the democratic spaces. Mm -hmm. We've continued to guide some of us, uh, even those who are outside our, our politics, who continue to, to give us wisdom mm -hmm. as young people so that we're able to to exercise this responsibility, mm -hmm. you know, with so much care, you know, and the mandate that we've been given. Mm. Interesting. So you are now, I mean, you are a founder, a founding member of uh, the Tajamuga movement. So what led to the formation of that, um, of that group? Uh, look, uh, Tajamuga was formed as a response to the misgovernance mm -hmm. that we felt was dominating in our body politic in the country. There were two dominant social movements at the time. This flag um, dominated by the middle class <laughs> in the country. Mm -hmm. And the Jamuka, which was a radical, mm -hmm. uh, youth-led social yeah. movement. Mm. Uh, the Jamuka's objective was to use the streets as a point of entry mm -hmm. to register or displeasure against the Mugabe. It, mm -hmm. it got me abducted. <laughs> it got me tortured. Mm -hmm. It got me thrown into Chikrupi Maximum prison. Mm. But uh, every revolutionary goes through that graduation, mm -hmm. goes through that process. But the Jamuka was to us one of the radical movements because we felt that every other means had been attempted mm -hmm. to deal with the Mugabe's regime. Mm -hmm. We felt that the streets, we, we started um, our demonstrations uh, in the streets of Arar. Mm -hmm. We went to Bulawai, we went to Manikaland, galvanizing and organizing young people. Mm -hmm. um, we, we were using non-violent street action. Mm -hmm. um, though there are other elements who try to be violent mm -hmm. during the processes. Within your party? Within the movement. The movement, that movement. Social movement. Oh, yeah. But we maintained our non-violent stance. Mm -hmm. uh, Mugabe was obviously not comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. uh, we got arrested, you know, uh, and, and, and so forth. So, but it was the intention at the time was to fight against the issues around bone notes. Mm -hmm. We felt that... Zimbabwe deserved a better currency. We still feel so uh, up to this very day, mm -hmm. almost this, uh, uh, six years after. We, we felt that it was important for young people to open the future because the present was and still continues to hold the future in suffocation. Mm -hmm. So Tajamuka was an expression of the dissatisfaction by young people. Uh, we were graduates. A majority of us were jobless. Mm -hmm. we, we couldn't go to work, there were no jobs, so there was so much anger. Because when we went to school, Mugabe had this a, a rhetoric that he would say every graduation, mm. that education is the only key to success. <laughs> but our argument was we have graduated, yes. there's no door to open. Mm -hmm. Where is the door? We now have the key, there's no door. 97% of people are jobless. So we felt that we must express that desire and we're using the streets as a point of entry, and, and we're prepared to, uh, Ola, to, to pay the ultimate price, mm -hmm. because death was in, in, in the face of our struggle. But, but do, you, do you think the, the movement you know, uh, achieved its goal? We think that we, we played an important role, because mm. you see, Karl Marx says something to us when we were students, mm -hmm. through readership, yes. that to struggle is men's reality. Mm -hmm. Our, our struggle is permanent. 
human beings from one generation to another who always fight for something. Mm -hmm. So whether we are fighting for a uh, freedom of speech or we are fighting for jobs, uh, uh, we still have to, even if you get those jobs, mm -hmm. people are still going to struggle for something. They're going to struggle for cultural rights. It's a struggle. Yeah. Because to struggle is men's reality. So we, so we contributed to that struggle because it's a continuous long process. It's a protected struggle. Most people think that a struggle is a one day one. Mm -hmm. They think when you go to an election, it has to be an end. It's not an end. Mm -hmm. It's part of the process. The liberation struggle took decades, but fighters never gave up. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. We, we are in a protected struggle. It's long and winding. Mm -hmm. So you, from time to time, you find dynamics and, 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 and creative ways to advance that struggle. But is, it, is, is, is the movement uh, still in existence? Of course, the movement never dies, Ola. Mm -hmm. The Tajamuka one? No, 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 Tajamuka is, is no longer. Tajamuka was a social movement, mm -hmm. which is part of the broad democratic movement. Mm -hmm. So the democratic movement includes democratic parties, mm -hmm. includes progressive civic society, yes. includes the labor movement, includes the students, mm -hmm. includes the church. That is the broad democratic family. Mm -hmm. And it remains in existence. Mm -hmm. It can move up into different movements and platform defend, okay. depending on the demands of the time. In uh, December 2017, there were you know, reports that uh, Tajamuka spokesperson then promised uh, Mukwanans was suspended for a year over alleged uh, abuse of uh, you know, donor funds and taking an oversight role you know, of the pressure group's uh, finance committee. So who was begging you in terms of uh, finances? Uh, look, the social movement was funded by people ordinary citizens. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I remember that when this allegation against the promise Mkwanans came in, we felt that it's important, whether proven or not, mm -hmm. it is important for him to take a back seat mm -hmm. um, uh, <laughs> for, so that we're able to investigate the issues because it had been brought into mm -hmm. the public spotlight mm -hmm. and we're able to continue uh, with, with our fight. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it was not only Mkwanas, there were so many allegations and it happens everywhere. Mm -hmm. People can put, and because it was an institution and a movement of the people, yeah. you can't block people. Uh, we did our investigations and found out what were the issues. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, some of the issues were a bit social. Mm. Some were bedroom issues. <laughs> so contradictions. So we, 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 when you say bedroom issues, uh, is, is it like uh, maybe Promise was involved in maybe relationships with other guys within the movement? No, 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 not within the movement. There were people outside the movement mm -hmm. who had their own domestic issues mm -hmm. with, with, with our spokesperson, <laughs> then, uh, uh, Comrade Mkwanans. And those issues, we then relegated them yeah. to be resolved domestically mm -hmm. and continued with our fight. Mm -hmm. And when so those they, issues were resolved... You didn't just... You didn't maybe misuse the funds? No, 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 it's not possible. Mm -hmm. The funds that were said then were, were, were almost millions of mm -hmm. dollars. There were no millions in mm -hmm. Tajamuka. People would walk from the ghetto to come and demonstrate mm -hmm. in the city. The support that was coming was for people to uh, print t-shirts. Mm -hmm. We're only being given material uh, yeah. things. When someone would contribute t-shirts to printers and printers would call us to go and collect. Yes. Some would contribute uh, uh, whistles, you know, and mm -hmm. so forth. Yeah. So it was material uh, support mm -hmm. coming. It was not uh, money, money. It was not financial. Yeah. None of us were, were, mm -hmm. were given money to say, no, you're fighting, you must get money. Oh, so see. when those issues came in, they were investigated by the people. Mm -hmm. But the reason why it was in the spotlight was it was a movement of the people mm -hmm. which was more dominant on the internet. Yeah. So things came <laughs> on the internet and you know that Zimbabweans and the internet, yes. they, 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 they enjoy when these such stories come in. So you were part of uh, the Nelson Mandela Fellowships as well, you know, as uh, the Obama Fellowship. So were these stints uh, ever forced you... Um, to, to rethink, to rethink uh, your, I mean, the political aspirations, or s it cemented them. Uh, look, it cemented my belief. I'm a Democrat myself. I'm a proud um, product of the International Socialist Organization. Uh, it it grounded some of us. Mm -hmm. You see, when you are in leadership, you must have a philosophy, which is the current problem in this country. There is no governing philosophy. Mm -hmm. When we were in ISO, we were grounded in, in left politics. Uh, and when I moved into MDC, which is a center-left organization, those values 
that makes me poor, poor. That makes me attached to the concrete realities of our people, as, as things that are non-negotiable to me. So now I went even to the uh, Mandela uh, uh, um, Washington Fellowship. I still end up to this very day, maintain my values mm -hmm. of justice, of freedom, of solidarity, of connecting our struggles with ordinary people. Mm -hmm. So, so the fellowship cemented my beliefs as a Democrat. Uh, they, they didn't temper. If they wanted to take me to the right, it wasn't going to be possible. Mm -hmm. So even the choice of the university that I went to is an university that I know has, has, has brought uh, and has mentored uh, social democrats world over. So it, it, it did not have a contradiction in terms of my ideological uh, disposition and my beliefs as a Zimbabweans, and more importantly, as an African, mm -hmm. because there are struggles that are global, but there are struggles that are continental in nature. Mm -hmm. Africa has its own unique challenges, and, and the West and the, and the global South contributed to the challenges that we're facing today, mm -hmm. and we confront those questions without fear, and on those Pan-African uh, positions are something that are non-negotiable to some of us, and, and I'm happy that people that we've interacted with respect those views. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other example is that where I come from in Matabeliland, with our own unique experience uh, uh, after independence mm -hmm. in 1987, uh, uh, what was known as Kukurawundi. And, and what gives me comfort in the democratic family is that they have so much respect of our unique experiences as a people, that despite that we're issues that are national, there are other issues that affect peculiar people. And that respect in platforms that we belong to is something that inspires us because you don't have to have those issues put under the carpet. Despite that we are national in essence, we also have our own unique experiences mm -hmm. as a people. Mm. Last year, after the formation of uh, you know Triple C, uh, you ran for member of parliament uh, for Pelanda Bachabalala uh, constituency and eventually won. How was the build up to the election? Uh, look, um, the bid up to the election was very tough because I was so much involved in the presidential campaign mm -hmm. um, and we're traversing the entire part of the country um, to ensure that uh, our presidential campaign was solid. Mm -hmm. Because you know that uh, Zimbabwe uses a Westminster first past the post system, meaning that the president is on the ballot. Unlike in other countries and jurisdictions like South Africa, mm -hmm. the party is on the ballot, not the name not of the, the country. Yeah. But in Zimbabwe, the name of the candidate is on the ballot. Mm -hmm. So it means that we have to invest uh, in building up the name, mm -hmm. in building up, because it becomes an institution. Mm -hmm. So many people see us when we talk about uh, Nelson Chamisa, mm -hmm. President Chamisa, they don't understand that his name is on the ballot. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that it is in the back of the mind of every mm -hmm. vote. So I was so much involved in the presidential campaign to ensure that citizens are aware of what is happening. But at the same time uh, in my campaign, I had a double candidate, so it was a tough terrain, it was a tough race, uh, but I sailed through. Mm. And, and up to today, I'm, I have so much gratitude mm. to the people of Chabalal. I grew up there, yeah. the, the, the universal consensus mm. around my candidate. So it was, it was a smooth flow, mm -hmm. very tough in terms of balancing the programs, yeah. but in terms of people's views, I had guaranteed oh, um, support of the people and commitment, but I never took it for granted mm. that the people supported me. So I went flat out. If I was not in the presidential campaign, I was in my own campaign. Mm -hmm. So I had this two uh, tiresome uh, process for almost four months, uh, juggling between the two you know, campaigns. And it was exciting, of course, because it was my first time to run for a public office. Wow. And I was very clear to that. I was not rejected. Mm, uh, one at, at first. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, during 2023 uh, election campaign, um, you were arrested for allegedly defacing campaign posters belonging to a fellow Triple uh, C member. You know, maybe if you can tell us uh, what kind of politics, maybe tricks you are playing there. Uh, look, uh, the, the, there was so much investment, mm -hmm. uh, Ola, to have some of us um, to lose the election. <laughs> So, so there were so many tactics by my opponents uh -huh. um, that were used. Um, so there was so much sabotage. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there were cases, two cases that were reported to the police mm -hmm. um, uh, that I defaced posters. And I went to court on the case and, and I came out, uh, you know, I was discharged. Mm -hmm. 
because on the day in question, I was actually in Mashona and East mm. on a presidential uh, rally, and they were able to you, to get that information from mm -hmm. service providers. Oh yeah. And and they looked my location at the day, mm -hmm. and and the court was convinced beyond doubt that I was not in the scene of the crime, mm. and therefore the case was dismissed. But who, who then and, uh, so, did so, that? So there was this same. Um, so the regime produced what we call in English lexicon troglodytes. <laughs> so so, so these are these are uh, agents that come from the caves with the intention to distract uh, the people. Mm -hmm. So they produced this, this small troglodyte. Uh, uh, I, I forget her name, mm -hmm. uh, but she was a lady. Mm -hmm. So she came in and uh, the, the paper side, you know, the fiasco of that. Uh, 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 at the masquerade. Is, is, is that uh, Soneni Moyo? Yes, yes, that's the name. Mm -hmm. So so she, she came in, she masqueraded as triple C. Mm -hmm. And ironically, the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission accepted her papers, despite that our party had made it very clear that mm -hmm. this is our official candidate. So so she became a candidate, uh, obviously to confuse people. Mm -hmm. uh, and during the campaign, they wanted me to be arrested so that I have no sufficient time to campaign. So mm -hmm. it was a strategy. They will always have these tactics to, but the people were very clear. Um, you know, they attempted to do the same when I also went for my Highlanders team uh, uh, match, mm. you know, got me also arrested. So it, it happens, you know, so, so, but, but I, but, I but what, what happened on that day when, when, when you got arrested for uh, the Dynamo's uh, Highlanders game? Uh, look, I was caught by the police that you posted on Twitter that you fear Fogo, uh, you fear nothing. <laughs> uh, and therefore, you are, and, and was wearing Highlanders t shirt uh -huh. uh, 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 and holding this uh, uh, stick. Yes. It's our tradition. Yes. We, we hold what we, we see, what an op carry uh -huh. in Dugu. Uh -huh. It's a source of proud, pride for some of us. Yes. So, so I was carrying that and I posted on the internet. But what was happening on the ground is that our supporters, our people were disgruntled by uh, the, the, result. the conduct of the referee. <laughs> In Papa Fields, and you know, Papa Fields is a revolutionary stadium. Uh -huh. So, in, in there, we when we are in Highlanders' chases, we, we are very clear, we don't tolerate anything <laughs> that is short of the rules of the game. Uh -huh. So, when the referee went, so you, outside, so you, you, you brought in your, your activism there. No, 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 I was actually not in the pitch in the day in question, yes, I was actually in Machine Center, okay. But I just posted a picture on Twitter, yes, and because I posted in the micro blocking site. Mm -hmm. And then some started to alert the police that he must be arrested. Mm -hmm. But I was not in the match. I just posted on my uh, platform, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that we, we fear nothing. And for sure, some of us, we don't fear anything. Mm -hmm. So I re-emphasized and, you know, reaffirmed that position. And they felt that I had incited uh, supporters, but mm -hmm. people were discounted against the, the, the referee. And it was nothing political. So when you went to court, what did the court say? The court realized that uh, there was no case at all. Because it was nothing political, and this was not the first time it happens in Papa Fields mm -hmm. or anywhere in the stadiums. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the culture, it's the tradition, it's how food on, football fans uh, behave. And as a team, we're actually fined by 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 Zifa. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something that we did not condone as as, as supporters of uh, 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 the team, but we had no choice. That is what supporters do. They are our supporters. They did it out of passion mm -hmm. and anger, but our team corrected it. And we moved on, and we're happy in the league. You mentioned about uh, Soneni Moyo earlier on. So tell us about issue, you know, uh, with Soneni Moyo, who claimed you uh, insulted here in the run up to the 2023 general elections. Uh, that one is a political non-entity. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 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 they don't matter in the body politic of our country, um, uh, but they were only used, you know, and 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 it happens to every. It's very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. The, these are people that get used, uh, you know, uh, to advance certain narrow interests. Uh, but I was never swayed by these issues. Uh, they brought me before the courts, and again, I was found not guilty mm -hmm. by the, the, the courts of the land. That you are not guilty uh, because they, they were saying I, I was singing songs, mm -hmm. insulting them. I, I didn't sing any song. I'm, I'm not good even in singing. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 it's not my area of competence. <laughs> I might be passionate, but I'm not competent. Mm -hmm. there. I'm not gifted in singing. Yeah. So, so they attempted so much to try and uh, use these avenues, uh, you know, to stop me in the campaign. It was one of these challenge, 
he charges and blows to me during the campaign. We carry so many burdens, you know, as democratic crusaders, but we, we, we just have to carry the burden and move mm -hmm. on. So it was part of the blows, but I had to carry. I knew that I was not guilty, but I still had to go to the police. I still had to go to the courts. I spent days traveling in and out of the courts, you know, uh, but I had no choice because I knew that I was not guilty. And I was glad when the court pronounced that uh, I'm not guilty. You're not guilty. Okay. So you had a short stint in parliament. Uh, you were elected um, as a member of parliament for Pelandaba uh, before the recall. Uh, can you explain the circumstances surrounding your, your recall, your recall from, from parliament uh, last year? Look, uh, uh, there was a tortoise that was brought to <laughs> our party uh, and they put the tortoise in the lamp post and uh, they started writing letters. Um, uh, which is an indictment to the institutions of our country because uh, someone just came, you know, uh, without uh, no democratic credentials, no proof that you are a member of this movement, and went on to say you are a leader. You, 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 if it was you, Ola, it would have been better mm -hmm. because we knew you. You were you, you are a popular person who would follow your shows. Mm -hmm. So if it was Ola, you'd say no, maybe. People during the show, they told him that you must recall us. <laughs> At least you would have had some de facto legitimacy to recall some of us. But this one was not just a charlatan. Mm -hmm. This one was a, a, a vendor picked from the street. In fact, I just read in some of uh, the news that you were sworn into the senator just yes. a, mm -hmm. a, a, a few, few days mm -hmm. ago. Yeah. So, so this one was used now as a total is put on a lamp post to recall some of us in parliament, understandably because we were going to be a pain uh, 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 in that parliament. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt, I went to parliament during the budget seminars, mm -hmm. so there was no discourse in mm -hmm. parliament. I, I, I went then to parliament again uh, uh, when parliament opened. Mm -hmm. In that session, a, a ZANPF members of parliament started to sing but they could not overpower some of us mm -hmm. because despite that they were the quantitative majority, we were the qualitative majority because we young people who were very vibrant in that august house. So we started singing and there was ten still in parliament. And, and the speaker of parliament with ZANPF then could not stop us because it was ZANPF mm -hmm. which started the, uh, the, the, the behavior. So we were then chucked out in parliament in the next session. And then the other session when I went to parliament, I wanted to raise a point of order. <laughs> and the deputy speaker just rose up and said, Ostalos, leave the house. Mm -hmm. So the next session I was recalled. So I never had an opportunity to even give a message. So speech. the glorious moment, the only moment you had, uh, perhaps you didn't use, use it uh, you know, wisely because you were singing. No, no, not You're really. You're busy singing in your gas house. No, no, no. You must understand, uh, Ola, <laughs> Parliament is a platform to express the political sentiment in the country. We are coming from an election. Mm -hmm. we, we had disagreements, and we still have those disagreements today, mm -hmm. about the outcome of the election. And we used the Parliament as a point of entry to express that dissatisfaction as a leadership collective. Mm -hmm. So it was not singing in the form of Rihanna or Alec Macheso. <laughs> It was singing in a revolutionary manner uh -huh. to express our dissatisfaction about the political mm. in our country. Mm. So it was a revolutionary act uh, by our members of parliament. Uh, and and, and we, we have no regrets about it. Mm -hmm. uh, what's uh, the impact and how has it affected uh, the Triple C? Look, it has had a huge imp impact uh, on, on the Triple C because uh, uh, we were very clear. Uh, to, to ZANPF, uh, uh, our opponents, I wouldn't want to mention other parties. Mm -hmm. um, we're very clear to our opponents and those who are working with them from within that once you remove uh, uh, some of us mm -hmm. from uh, parliament mm -hmm. and, and uh, you remove uh, 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 our deployees, you have effectively uh, closed that chapter of Triple C. Mm -hmm. So from that moment, Triple C ceased to become the vehicle of choice. To take us forward. You were, you were this. You announced. Are you saying you you were the triple C? The triple C is represented in the form of its deployees, mm -hmm. councillors. But uh, do you still have uh, MPs or deployees in that parliament? They are still members of parliament, but 
the attack in the first batch of our, our, our um, uh, members of parliament. Mm -hmm. And the second batch was a clear mm -hmm. uh, act of closing mm -hmm. C as a vehicle to take us forward. It, it, was, it was without doubt. Mm -hmm. It was without doubt. Earlier on, you mentioned about, um, you know, uh, Chabang uh, saying maybe he is just an imposter who came from nowhere. Uh, but there were some pictures circulating on social media and some people saying um, Chabang was part of the MDC, uh, then MDC, as a chairperson for Matabeland, um, is it North or what? Yes. Yes. But you were part of that movement as well. Thank you very much. Meaning to say, you know him. Okay, not maybe in the triple C, but you know him. Then later on, he, he then said, I'm part of the triple C. And people saying, they know him, but you, the leadership, saying, we don't know him. Which is thank, it now? Thank you very much. I, I want to, to demystify uh, uh, that uh, 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 guy. Mm -hmm. you, you said it very well. First, it's not a question of maybe. Mm -hmm. It's a question of if. Mm -hmm. He was never the Secretary General of the Triple C. Mm -hmm. On the facts on the ground, one, at the law, the Triple C, as a legal entity registered to the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, had no such a position of the Secretary General. Mm -hmm. Because if it had, the Secretary General would have been the one doing correspondence mm -hmm. with the Presidium. We went into election in, 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 in February mm -hmm. 2022. The correspondence to the commission was very clear. It was written by President Chamisa. Mm -hmm. It was coming from the president's office. And President Chamisa appointed signatories. And this charlatan was not a, a part of those. Mm -hmm. We went into the by-election uh, with the triple C. After its formation uh, on the 24th of uh, 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 January mm -hmm. 2022, we went into the by-election. We won members of parliament and councillors. Mm -hmm. We went into the election and, and we proceeded. And then you, you, you raise it very clear that he was the chairperson of the MDC. Mm -hmm. I was, in my individual capacity, mm -hmm. at some stage, part of the MDC alliance. Mm -hmm. When we had a contestation on the leadership composition of the MDC mm -hmm. alliance, it was the high court of this country and the supreme court, which is the supreme court in this country, mm -hmm. which is the highest court, which through Justice Patel mm -hmm. made a ruling on the fate of the MDC. Mm -hmm that President Chamisa and the other leaders who had been elected in 2019 in Kweru had ceased to be uh, leaders of the MDC alliance. alliance. Because Justice Patel argued that the Triple C is not a political party, that it was just an umbrella mm -hmm. of different political parties, mm -hmm. that the, the political party was the MDC team. Mm -hmm. That's why it took us back then into the 2014 uh, structures. And that's why you saw the faces of... Uh, Douglas Monzo mm -hmm. and Tukuzan Kupe coming in. Yes. We all lost the MDC alliance. Mm -hmm. We became partyless after all of you. It because the Constitutional Court nullified the legal existence of, of the MDC alliance. Mm. That it is not a political party. Yeah. It is not a legal persona. It cannot sue. It cannot be sued. Mm. So there are some now who have a mind of a red who forget all these judgments who want to then say, it is for that reason why we could not recall MDC Alliance or protect our members of parliament mm -hmm. then. It was now Douglas Monzore and Togozanku mm -hmm. because we had lost control of the MDC Alliance. Mm -hmm. The court had ruled clearly that this is not a political party. And all of you who were elected in Gweru mm -hmm. have no power. It nullified the entire mm -hmm. process that yeah. happened in Gweru. Mm -hmm. That produced President Chamisa, Professor Oshume Nube, Tendai BT, mm -hmm. And, and Lynette Kanyer as Vice President, and Chowton went as mm. the Secretary General, and myself as the Youth Secretary General. Mm -hmm. All that was nullified by the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So we became partyless. President Chamisa, President Advocate Nelson Chamisa, then formed a political, and I underlined, Triple C. he then became the founder and the president. We then exercised our constitutional right to associate mm -hmm. and join the Triple C. Mm. You get from the MDC point. Alliance to Triple C. We were, we, we, at that time, we were, we were, we're never, partyless. We were partyless, so we are not members of any party. Mm -hmm. Because Harvest House, which was the headquarters of the MDC, mm -hmm. had been taken over, being controlled by Monzora, mm -hmm. Morgan Komich, and all those who are now relic of history. Yes. So we were partyless. Mm -hmm. So it is not possible to marry the two. It, it, it is disingenuous and counter-revolutionary. 
and not true for anyone, in fact, for anyone who's educated mm -hmm. and was of a lawyer to go and argue that the people who are leading MDC are leaders of the Triple C, mm -hmm. are being disingenuous. Because Triple C was founded by President James. He then exercised presidential powers to appoint some of us. Mm -hmm. And the party was then run through what was called the Citizen National Assembly, mm -hmm. which became the highest decision-making board of the Triple C. It was the one making decisions. It is the one that qualified the candidates who, who, who participated in the by-election. Mm -hmm. It is the one that made decisions about different Perus. How many members mm -hmm. were part of that? Uh... There were so many of them, were more than 200, mm -hmm. from different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. Remember with the communications period that with me and, and, and Honorable Fazza, mm -hmm. with the elections period that with Ian Makoni and uh, uh, Ellen, the Honorables, you, you had the Treasury Peru, which had David Coltart. You, you had the organizing Peru with Amos Chibaya and Moke. Mm -hmm. You had the Youth Peru, which had uh, uh, Honorable Nkatsuri now. You had the Women's Peru. So all these were all kinds of the Triple C. But weren't those um, um, positions? Of course, those were positions. But we were told that uh, there were no positions in Triple C. The positions that we made very clear that were not mm. there, in particular, and I want to underline, <laughs> it is the position of the Secretary General. Oh, but that other position positions did not there. exist. Other we we didn't there. have political positions in the form of the nomenclature of our yesterday movement. Mm -hmm. We didn't have what is called a Vice President. We didn't have what is called a Secretary General. We didn't have what is called uh, what was uh, with Perus. What was Professor Weshman Nube's uh, position at Ndai uh, BT and uh, uh, Mike Corey? Uh, Lynette Karen, uh, uh, Honorable Tendai BT, Professor Weshman Nube, all of them were part of the Citizen National Assembly. Mm -hmm. because it was led with cluster leaders. Mm. Honorable Tendai BT, uh, the uh, um, Mash, uh, uh, the um, uh, Harare East. A, a, a MP Emeritus was a cluster leader in Marshall Central. Mm. A, Honorable Lidet Kanyer in Kore a, was a cluster leader in Bohera. Mm -hmm. I was a cluster leader in Lupan. Mm -hmm. So all of us in the leadership collective became part of the Citizen National Assembly on the basis of being cluster leaders. But why were they called vice presidents? By who? Even in, in your address, you'd say, you'd say Pres uh, Vice President Bitti. Look, Vice President Bitti. Look, look, uh, look, look, there are two, Ola, there are two uh, distinctions and identities. Uh -huh. Was it like a, just a ceremonial uh, appointment? There, there are people, these are uh, uh, comrades mm. whom we had worked with. Mm -hmm. In the yesterday movement, they held these positions. Mm -hmm. When there was the Secretary General, mm -hmm. it, is, it, was, it was only natural for me in my interactions with Charlton Wayne, to say Secretary to General. We say him, because once a Secretary but General... A new, but this is a new hold, movement. Hold, hold a bit. Yeah. We say in our politics, mm -hmm. once a Secretary General, always a Secretary General. Mm -hmm. I was the Students' Union President. When I meet you pass, mm -hmm. they refer to me as a President. <laughs> I'm not the President of the Triple C or any political uh -huh. party now. But I was once a Student President. Uh -huh. So in politics, there are people who call me Honorable now, Ola. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer an honorable member of parliament. But President, uh, but President still Chamisa, you still refer him as President Chamisa. Was president, president Chamisa became the champion in chief and president uh -huh. and the founder of the Triple C. Without law, vice presidents. Yes. At law, President Chamisa held that position. Mm -hmm. It might not be a popular uh, view within the political elite, mm -hmm. but it is what existed mm -hmm. legally at Triple C. Mm -hmm. There might be people who are not satisfied about, and it's understandable. Mm -hmm. There might be people who might not be happy about why we took was, that Was stance. it clear to, uh, to these uh, uh, comrades uh, to say, no, you are not a vice president within the it, party? Uh, or it was like, okay, we, we just call you a vice president, but on paper you are not. What was the let, communication let, like? Let me, let me I'll, I'll share this uh, information with you mm -hmm. and our viewers. All of us were in the MDC alliance uh, who joined the Triple C. Mm -hmm. We were all invited by President Chamisa in a conversation on one on one basis. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, a, a comrade of Stalos, you were a deputy spokesperson in MTC. Now in Triple C, you are, you are a cluster leader. Uh, uh, this is how I envision as a visionary, this is how I think things would move. 
and I gave my opinions, and those opinions are obviously protected by mm -hmm. uh, 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 the secrets yeah. of that office. Mm -hmm. But I shared my views about what he thought and what I thought. Mm -hmm. That process happened to everyone who joined the Triple C, mm -hmm. who was part of the leadership collective, that mm -hmm. you held this position in, in the MDC, MDC line. but you no longer have it in Triple C, mm -hmm. but you are a leader in your own right. And this is how, as your visionary, I think we must proceed. Mm -hmm. And we all brought to an understanding because you see, he bears the vision. And it is important to share with your leadership collectively your vision as yeah. a vision bear. Because once there are two visions, mm -hmm. there is now division. So it was important and all of us underwent that process privately with President Chamis. Mm -hmm. I can confirm with absolute certainty that all these people had a conversation with President Chamis. Mm -hmm to share that there were leaders in the SDA movement, mm -hmm. but they've joined a new political are you, are you Are, are you certain that uh, these guys were told that you guys are just leaders, you're not vice presidents in those uh, meetings? Because look, look, uh, it, this, was, it, this, was, it was clear, my brother, mm. you are a journalist. Mm. I'll take you to a video and I'll share it with you just yeah. after this interview. Mm -hmm. On the 24th of January, that question was asked by journalists. Yes. So it is not need us to even have a conversation with President Trump, mm -hmm. but he gave us the cadence. Mm -hmm. But he answered the question when people said, you, Mr. President, you formed a political party. Mm -hmm. You call it the Triple C. Who is your vice president? Yes. He made it emphatically clear without any ambiguity mm -hmm. or ev evocation mm -hmm. yeah. that I have no vice president. Mm -hmm. That question was answered on inception. So it... I, I had no reason to even ask it after mm -hmm. the launch. Yeah. But when I joined it, he still gave us the cadence mm -hmm. so that we, we don't run a risk of importing mm -hmm. our positions of that other party yeah. into the triple C. Mm -hmm. Because in that way, we, 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 we had the danger of contaminating the triple C. But Chabong has proven it. Father Ima, when she was uh, still in uh, MDC Alliance, was, wasn't she a uh, spokesperson? She was appointed. But she, uh, she then... You know, she was given a fresh mandate. She was also was, the uh, spokesperson in the Triple C. It's just like you, Ola. Mm -hmm. You were hosting a, a podcast in ZFM. Mm -hmm. And today you are hosting postcard in DJ Ola. Mm -hmm. The two institutions are different. Yes. But you are still holding the same responsibility. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't make you the owner of your yesteryear organization. You can't right now at law go and claim your salary mm -hmm. from your yesteryear employer. <laughs> So Fat Zaymayere was given a fresh mandate, mm -hmm. but which was the same with the mandate that he held in the mm -hmm. MDC. Mm -hmm. But it was a fresh mandate given to her in Tsipusi. But it, it didn't happen to the other vice presidents? Of course, it didn't happen to mm -hmm. everyone. Mm -hmm. he, 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 the, the appointing authority and the... And remember that President Jamesa did not make these appointments alone. Mm -hmm. He would make a recommendation yeah. and the CNA will make an endorsement of a decision. Mm -hmm. Because it was the one with the powers to, to put the final endorsement. Yes of the appointments. Mm -hmm. So Fadzai Mayer was appointed in a new, clean, fresh mandate to be the spokesperson of Triple C. In uh, November 2023, you made this statement in a court. There is no organization without contradictions in this world. We have had debates in the past on which color we should use. If you report that a certain leader should, should use, uh, uh, if you report that a certain leader had a different view on the color which to use, then you want to say they are fissures. There are no fissures. There are no contradictions. We are a democratic party. We have discourse and we defeat each other at, uh, at the level of our superior logic. Our difference with our opponents is that we do not criminalize holding a different view. Close quote. Were you confirming that uh, there were no divisions in the Triple C? Of course. There were allegations that there were fissures in the Triple C at the mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. and, and and I made it very clear at the time that there were no there were no fissures. In fact, the allegations that had been put in the public platform uh, were not true, mm -hmm. uh, and I had to confirm uh, at the time that mm -hmm. there were no fissures, mm -hmm. um, and that was solid, and uh, we had consensus on what must happen. And but more importantly. The allegations that were criminalizing dissent mm -hmm. are what I affirmed that, look, we differ at the level of ideas. Mm -hmm. We don't criminalize uh, 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 the differing or holding different opinion. And that is part of our democratic culture. And, uh, but it seems like there's, um, or there are some factions, uh, you know, now, 
Uh, we see you moving mostly with um, uh, Honorable Amos Chibaya. Uh, where are the others? You know, where are others? Uh, like uh, the likes of, uh, like you said, Mike Corre, Wende, ETC. We no longer see those notable figures. Look, um, we, we made it very clear, uh, Ola, that the C is no longer uh, the vehicle to take Zimbabweans forward. Mm -hmm. and, and there are those in the present moment who be demanded to speak about Triple C and the leaders of the Triple C. Mm -hmm. We have been uh, traversing the country, mm. meeting with citizens in a very impressive um, show and response by citizens mm -hmm. around their genuine desire to see a democratic country and a democratic society. Mm -hmm. And we've done so with different uh, uh, leaders uh, and different citizens. We have come out. Uh, so when you when you have when you say different leaders, are you saying you are no longer working with those previous leaders? Look, um, it's not a question of uh, working with who. Mm -hmm. Remember, uh, Ola, when we formed the Triple C, and I see this because there are people who forget very quickly. Mm -hmm. When we formed the Triple C, it was the communications department mm -hmm. for the purpose of communication and the organizing department. Mm -hmm which conducted uh, 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 conversations across the country. Mm -hmm. We started with Masingo. President Chamisa uh, uh, came in, and if you remember that his car was then shorted, barricaded, from there we went to Manikaland and proceeded across the country. Mm -hmm. There is nothing new about these processes. There are departments, there are organs responsible. What is needed right now is people to get the message, mm -hmm. and I'm charged with the responsibility to give the message. So are you uh, not working with um, Wendy anymore? Look, it's not a question of whether I'm working with uh, mm. in these individuals <laughs> or not. Yeah. It's a question of us making sure that we converse with citizens. Mm -hmm. I know. Our, 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 in our regards objective. to that, uh, <laughs> look, uh, you know, the, the you were working why, with these guys before, even when it comes to mobilizing and whatnot. We, that is why I'm, I'm asking you now. We, we where work, is Wendy? Where is um, Mike Corey in, the, in all this? They Movement. are there. They are there. You haven't seen them. You have, I've seen uh, Mike Gore in Parliament. You have seen Honorable Wende in Parliament. In Parliament, yes. In yes, Parliament. They but are there. Where, what they about the movement? What about the movement now? In the Triple C. No, this new movement that you which, are... Which one? There is, there is no new movement. Okay. I see. okay. They, they, Let me they, put it clear here. Let me put it this way. Um, Comrade uh, Ostalos. Yes. You've been moving around the yes. country right yes. now. You're like on yes. a tour or whatever. Uh, with um, Honorable Bochibai. Yes. So it means you're working with Honorable Bochibai. Without a doubt. What is it that you are doing with Honorable Bochibai? What, 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 what is it all about? We have three objectives. Mm -hmm. And they have nothing to do with the individual leaders, mm -hmm. uh, as you would want to coin it. No, but I see you mobilizing we, we, a lot of people. Without doubt. Yes, what are you we, doing? We, 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 are, we, have, we have three objectives. Mm -hmm. The first objective is to galvanize the base. Mm -hmm. Number two is to communicate with our people. Mm -hmm. President Chamisa left the Triple C. So we have to discuss with the people the contents of the letter of resignation by President Chamisa. Mm -hmm. And thirdly and most important, to then hear the feedback from the people. Because we are charged by the citizens yeah. to make sure that the base is in aware of what is happening. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, we prepare them for the next important and decisive steps mm -hmm that we are going to uh, chat. But still, you should be doing that maybe probably with um, those other figures that I'm asking about. I'm not well, just asking about, is, you know, where is, they is, and is, others. Is but there a law? Is there a law that no, not, not a law. And, and, and but anyway, I'll give you an example. Yes. When we travel from one province to another, you will see these leaders. Mm -hmm. That's why you see, you saw Honorable Lynette Kareni mm -hmm. in Manikalin. Mm -hmm. But she belongs there. Mm -hmm. She's 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 a she member of part parliament. Of that movement. She was there, mm -hmm. but people so decided you to, are together. It, it it confirms the point. Mm -hmm. But she was there, you see. But I don't know why it has to be questions whether certain leaders have to because be. Because people are now saying maybe Mike Corey is still part of the Triple C. Uh, is that the position? Probably part of the Triple C and the movement again. Look, um, and 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 I have no mandate, mm -hmm. but I will say it for the benefit of our viewers. Mm -hmm. There are members of parliament who were elected into parliament mm -hmm. under the triple C. Yeah. 
The triple C does not belong to Sengezo Chaba mm -hmm. and, and his cabal. It belongs to who? The triple C belongs to its founding members, which are the citizens of this country. Mm -hmm. And those in parliament have got the mandate from uh, the citizens. Mm -hmm. and, and they've had their own processes. I'm no longer in parliament. Yeah, sure. So I cannot speak on behalf of uh, 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 members of parliament. But are you confirming that there those in people, parliament uh, on, 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 the, the, uh, on the triple C ticket are still your members? They, were, they are representatives of the citizens. Yeah, I There's understand. No debate but about are you it. still in comms with them? As in, like, okay, guys, we are together. We are a movement. These people all are. Oh, they're now... You know, I don't know uh, why a debate must rise. The, the, the Look, I don't know why a debate must rise, but these people were elected by re, to represent the citizens. Mm -hmm. We were assaulted and removed illegally mm -hmm. from parliament. And therefore, when we're now at the parliament functions on the basis of a caucus, mm -hmm. the caucus is a, a, a chief whip and a leader and a secretary and a spokesperson mm -hmm. and organs. Those are charged with the responsibility to communicate more importantly, more importantly, and I underline, mm -hmm. the Triple C, as was founded on the 24th, mm -hmm. met in Harare, uh, the Citizen National Assembly, then made a resolution that Honorable Jameson Timber becomes the caretaker, uh, secretary, administrator, and leader of that uh, movement. Mm -hmm. And therefore, from today, from that day up to onwards, mm -hmm. He has the authentic, legitimate mandate mm -hmm. to speak and the answer on the question about the status of members of parliament mm -hmm. and the status of councillors. Mm -hmm. And he is prosecuting that duty with this, uh, clarity and precision. Mm -hmm. and, and you might want to engage with him yeah. uh, on these specific questions about, for example, the status of individual yes. members yes. of parliament. Mm -hmm. because I don't want to speak on, on behalf of individual members of parliament lest I, I, I say wrong things. Yeah, but I can speak on behalf of ordinary people. I can speak on behalf of those who have the concrete issues, mm -hmm. who still have an answered question of the election of the 23rd. Mm -hmm. I can speak on behalf of uh, jobless young people. I can speak on behalf of underpaid workers mm -hmm. in government. When I was in parliament, Ola, I interfaced with the workers from ZPC. Mm -hmm. and, and I was affected about their status. These are people working from the broadcaster coming from a, a, a big show and they're looking for combis and their dignity is affected. Those are the people that I speak on. Their, I speak on behalf unequivocal mm -hmm. of soldiers and police officers who don't have a, a salary that buys anything and is below the poverty that I'm like. Teachers, those are people that I speak on their behalf. Okay. I don't want to, to, to have the temptation. You're speaking on behalf of those in parliament. Those um, those um, those are you working with, um, with Promise Mkwanaz? What do you mean working with him? Promise him, you know, promise. Yes. Um, tying on to you were together. Yes. I mean, I, I know we know that we were together. You were together in um, the Triple C. Yes. But when you also uh, moved to the new movement, his statements were like supporting your movement somehow. So Look, uh, promise him, is the spokesperson mm -hmm. of the Triple C, mm -hmm. and the Triple C. It was founded on the 24th of January, is a citizen's project. Mm -hmm. So he has got the mandate to speak on behalf of everyone mm -hmm. in the Triple C. And, and that mandate is unquestionable. Mm -hmm. That mandate is undoubtable. Mm -hmm. And he has got that legitimate uh, right as uh, the Triple C uh, is composed. So you haven't publicly confirmed your resignation from Triple C. Are you still within the party? Look, um, the questions of... Uh, resignations, mm -hmm. uh, the questions of um, status of uh, different people mm -hmm. um, is, is, is something that is public. And, and I've said it publicly. Mm -hmm. And I will say it today that the triple C in its current form, in its current composition, is no longer our vehicle to liberate this country. Mm -hmm. and, and it is without doubt, it is without doubt that it's no longer the vehicle of choice mm -hmm. for, for some of us. And the question about how um, uh, that transition is going to happen and what is going to happen next is a question that is going to be answered in due course. And, and I wouldn't want to put the cart before the horse mm -hmm. in terms of what is going to happen to different people mm -hmm. in terms of their statuses and so forth, because mm -hmm. that is going to come. But you haven't we you know, publicly resigned. Uh, because you see, 
All these things are subject to certain procedures and processes. So for now, we are, we are still a C member? For now, uh, Ola, mm -hmm. I hold the mandate from the citizens. Yes, which is I've, the, I, I we, 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 the citizens uh, we, you know, who formed the, uh, the, the Citizen Coalition for Change party. The citizens, Ola, formed the C. Yes. And the C is no longer the vehicle of choice to take us forward. Mm -hmm. And therefore, some of us, or myself in particular, mm -hmm. have no association, to put it in unequivocal terms, mm -hmm. I no longer have any association. You even put it in uh, writing. Uh, uh, that is why I said that there are processes that mm -hmm. have to be taken. Okay. And I wouldn't want to put the cart before the horse. Mm -hmm. What I've said politically and I've, I've confirmed That statement is loaded. Yeah, is that it's no longer the vehicle for the future. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's why some of us no longer associate with the triple C. Mm -hmm. uh, no longer associate with anything to do with the, that contaminated uh, uh, project. It is, it, it, is, it is a project that is not going to take us forward. If you're just joining us, I'm talking to Ostalos Asiziva here on the Ola Sai Podcast Show, on the spot. So, I hope you're enjoying this conversation with uh, Ostalos. So, how has this, uh, you know, recall impacted your, your political career and uh, your ability to represent your constituents? Look, uh, the recall um, didn't affect me. You see, when in politics... When, when the recalls happened, mm -hmm. this is not the first time in our history as Democrats. So when the recall uh, uh, happened, I was not in the list of the first people to be recalled. Mm -hmm. And our politics now, if you're not recalled, uh, people start to ask questions. Mm -hmm. uh, why are you not being recalled? Are you not on Maybe you're part of the faction. Maybe you're part of these people yes. who are working mm -hmm. with the regime. So when the first recall came in, we were aware of it, mm -hmm. and I put a statement, and I said on, on X, it is without a doubt uh, that my president is advocate Nelson Chamis, mm -hmm. and I will not waver from that position. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I made it very public so that I knew that what will follow are doubts uh, from our people. In fact, uh, uh, one of our leaders in the community mm -hmm. called me, I said, but Ostalos, uh, we hear that you are a very close confidant mm -hmm. of Professor Wishman Nube. Yes. And therefore, you are not going to be recalled because they are the ones doing recalls. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, I respect Professor Wishman Nube. Mm -hmm. He's one of the people that I've respected all my life yeah. in the democratic uh, opposition. Mm -hmm. and, 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 but I am not his, his close confidant, mm -hmm. but I respect him because he's my leader, he's my elder. Is someone who has done well in the academy, and I respect him so much. So, so when that question came, I knew mm -hmm. that they would start to label me, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 that is why I became very vociferous mm -hmm. in articulating the position against the impositors. And in fact, I heard in some of the conversations that 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 they'd gone uh, and asked some of the colleagues to say, but this young man, mm -hmm. we haven't recalled him, why is he talking too much? Mm -hmm. And I said, look, I stand on principle. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've, I have no fear of being recalled. Mm -hmm. So when they recalled me in parliament, I was prepared both mentally mm -hmm. and politically. Mm -hmm. So it never affected me. because so, I so, so Somehow it confirms that uh, Professor Weshman was behind these uh, recalls. Of course, uh, he was asked that question, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't want to speak on his behalf. Yeah. Uh, that was the assumption um, that came at the time, mm -hmm. and he confirmed his position mm -hmm. uh, to say he did not partake in the other batch of recall, meaning he participated in the, the other. other. Uh, and he said his issues. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with his position <laughs> with great respect yeah. that the Triple C was the MDC reincarnate. Mm -hmm. That statement is false. <laughs> that <laughs> statement is disingenuous. I don't agree with great respect. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, to the professor, he held no position like the vice president mm -hmm. uh, in, in the triple C. And, so, and, and I mean, in that position. What are your future, you know, uh, plans in light of the recall? Do you plan to contest elections again or pursue other avenues within the political sphere? Look, uh, in trip, in opposition politics, our position is very clear. We want to change government via an election, and therefore we participate in every election. If they are going to call for an election under water, we are going to participate. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. We believe that 
government can be changed democratically. Mm -hmm. And democratically means via an election. Mm -hmm. And that is why we participate in elections and we're going to participate in future elections in our country. Yeah. As for my personal faith, in, to us, the people always decide. If I'm deployed to a specific office and with the credibility and the credentials and the capabilities, I'm going to execute. But for now, I be a demanded to make sure that we prepare uh, the ground. Mm -hmm. We continue to work with ordinary people directly with citizens to prepare ourselves mm -hmm. uh, for the future of our uh, politics and what is going to be happening mm -hmm. in the next... So you're now waiting for 2028? Look, to us, 28, 28 is not in our calendar. Mm -hmm. You see, our calendar is not based on 2028. Mm -hmm. Our calendar is going to be informed by our program of action, mm -hmm. which we are going to be speaking to hopefully very soon. And that becomes the so it calendar means, It means 2028, it's... Uh, is it far or it's maybe you are going to then action those um, points you're we saying after 2028? We, we, we cannot pivot mm -hmm. on 2028. We have mm -hmm. unresolved the questions of the 23rd of August, mm -hmm. 2023. Mm -hmm. And we are pivoting our issues in political program in resolving mm -hmm. the contestation around the outcome of the election. Are you, I mean, do, do you think uh, it's going to change anything, uh, you know, uh, from the, whatever, the outcome of the 23rd... I've, I've, uh, I've, I'm not a prophet, mm -hmm. but I do what has to be done. I do what has to be done mm -hmm. within my powers, mm -hmm. and we do everything as citizens within our powers to ensure that we, we fight and to ensure that we execute our fight to the best of our abilities. Mm -hmm. What is more important is that we will do it to the best mm -hmm. and to the very best of our abilities yeah. to wage a collective fight mm -hmm. against the grievances that we have mm -hmm. about the leadership composition in our country. Okay, was there uh, any constitution in, uh, in the Triple C party, um, uh, Comrade Rosales? If so, how was then, uh, was it uh, manipulated? Look, we had a constitution, we had founding documents, we had a constitution of the party, we, we had um, the elections template, we had um, so many founding documents that were debated and discussed by the Citizen National Assembly and adopted. Mm -hmm. We submitted our constitution in court in one of the summons matter mm -hmm. uh, where there is directly triple C against Sengizu Chaba. Mm -hmm. The court deliberately avoided to issue a judgment on that case mm -hmm. because it seals the fate of the impositor. Mm -hmm. So we know what competitive authoritarian regime do. They're going to delay that case. It's a summons matter, but it is the case that answers the question whether or not Chaba has got the powers that he claims he has. Who wrote the constitution? It was wrote by us in the in the citizens' coalition. For when? Sure. It was written um, after the inception of the party. Mm -hmm. It was so. It was written on the in 2022. Mm -hmm. After the, the launch of our party, we started working on our different founding. Was documents. the uh, constitution made public? It was made public after we put it in court. Mm -hmm. We had made a, a decisive after decision. those yes. you know the disputes, uh, conflicts, but before that, we had made the it constitution a position. was not public. We had made it a position that we're not going to publish our statutes. Uh, if you say the, 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 the party, um, uh, or it belongs to the people, then those people did not have the constitution. What does it mean? Who are the people? That is the question. Citizens. The ordinary people. Yes, ordinary citizens people. Citizens are yes. part of the people that we consulted mm -hmm. around the assault on the authentic uh, uh, opposition in this country. Mm. And we knew that the uh, manipulation and the assault on the party is going to come what, via What, what if I put it to you this way, uh, Comrade Rosales, that maybe this constitution uh, was maybe forged somehow, uh, maybe you know, in preparation of the court's uh, sessions? How do you forge by who? Because if you forge a document, there must be an original document by the original drafters. Oh, maybe let me we were the drafters. not forged probably, but uh, maybe Magato Gazrapanyo one. No, no, no. The, 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 the constitution then presented to the court. No, no, no. To we, counter we, this one. We, we had a constitution. Mm -hmm. That constitution all was supposed to be officially publicized and adopted in a convention mm -hmm. that we were supposed to hold after the election. Mm -hmm. So we produced it in court because it was now needed. Mm -hmm. That's why we produced it. Mm -hmm. But that constitution was supposed to be made public mm -hmm. in the official launch of the Triple C, okay. which was supposed to happen after the election. It was not possible 
for us to release that document before the official launch mm. of the movement. Mm -hmm. After our announcement on the 24th of February, we then had to come up with a roadmap. Mm -hmm. And that roadmap included adoption and all these other documents. But, that my question was, how was it then manipulated, that constitution? That constitution was never manipulated. Mm -hmm. That constitution is in court. Mm -hmm. And it is clear in terms of who is who in the mm -hmm. C. Mm -hmm. So it was never manipulated. In fact, it is Chabahangu and his team, which then created a bogus constitution. And why do I say it's bogus? A, a, a Chabangu was caught in flagrant delicto. Mm -hmm. He was caught, like a husband who was caught cheating mm -hmm. directly by uh, his wife, mm -hmm. he pens it down. Because when they went, they produced their, their documents in, in court. And that document was an MDC Alliance Constitution. Mm -hmm. In several occasions, they edited and just uh, uh, changed the triple C. But because it was in a haste, and it was a forgery now. Mm -hmm. So the people who forced actually it is Sengezo Chabang and his team. Mm -hmm. Because the same constitution that was saying, this is the constitution of the triple C. In page 98, <laughs> it was saying the MTC alliance. <laughs> so they were exposed in, 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 in court. And that's why up to this very day, there's uh -huh. no judgment on that case. Because it sealed the fate, it seals the fate of the charlatans. Mouse but uh, the what went wrong with the opposition politics? Is it um, you know, fixable? My brother, if you read upon your history, not just from 99. Mm -hmm. Read your history from the liberation struggle. You would understand why there were changes of name of political parties. Mm -hmm. The ZANU-PF that is contesting today was not named ZANU-PF back then. Political parties were changing because the oppressor then, Ian Smith, would use the law to ban political parties. Joshua Nkomo at some many stages has to change the Zapu that you see today was not Zapu in its inception. It was changing because Ian Smith would just enact a law and ban political party, and it is captured in history. So it is now an old wine. It is now a replica of what happened. But yours is not, uh, was never banned. Look, Your political party was never banned, but it's you, you guys, maybe we are just... No, 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 no. Mm. This, the triple C mm. effectively has been banned. Mm -hmm. How do you teach a Ola? How do you say there is a political party with a president who is publicly known as a, as a founder and a president who contested the election as the presidential candidate, who communicates with the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission and they accept his uh, correspondence? Mm -hmm. He writes to the Speaker of Parliament and tells him that advocate Mutenda, mm -hmm. this is the correspondence and this is how we are going to be communicating. Mm -hmm. a, a Mutenda, an officer of the law, disregards that letter and take a letter from a street kid. And, 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 and make it a letter that has effect to our country. Mm -hmm. Do you know that we spent more than two million on by-elections? We spent taxpayers' money on the by-election out of an act of illegality. The letter by Sengizo Chabangu has costed taxpayers more than two million. Mm -hmm. Not only that, it has costed lives. We lost a, 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 a pastor in Mavuku because of the by-election, which was caused by an impositor. We, 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 are, we are spending so much taxpayers' money uh, on the basis of acts of illegality, in fact, on the basis of criminal acts and criminal conducts. It is an indictment on the institutions of the state. It is an indictment on the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission and its credibility. Look, we are now a laughing stock. Advocate Mutenda can't go anywhere in the world. He's an advocate of the court. He knows the law. But he takes a letter from a charlatan from the streets and say, you are an, eff you are an effective office bearer of Triple C and I'm going to respect your position. Uh, 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 is the same thing happens to that other one uh, in, in local uh, uh, government. Mm -hmm. They take a letter, they effect it. They cost taxpayers money. It's an indictment on the state. It's an indictment on our country. It's an indictment on the government of the day. Mm -hmm. so, so that is what is wrong about our country. That why do we have to cost taxpayers money out of all this? But let me tell you why. They're doing this because our opponents didn't have two-thirds majority in parliament. And they've got their plans. And, and they've started speaking about it. You saw them in Masingo, talking about 2030 and 2030. But they, and, they and then released a statement later on saying, no, it's not a, on an official position. Look, uh, they can raise a statement, but this is what their people were saying, and their members of parliament were saying. These are members of parliament of their party. I don't speak on their behalf, but I'm saying, I'm putting the data at more. This is what is in the public. They've said it in their official gatherings. 
and 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 you, that conversation has to go through parliament mm. and they know that some of us when we're there we're not going to accept that uh, kind of a uh, uh, butchering of our constitution so so it's all a plan it's all a program it's all deliberate and we know these are part of the plots and it's not the first time they did it with president swangrai they've done it with president james it's a history repeating itself and the the question is do we give up? The answer is no. Mm. We can't give up. We can't so, capitulate. Why, why did uh, President uh, Chamisa resign from the Citizen Coalition uh, for Change? Did the ambiguity you know, work uh, to his advantage? What does this departure mean for you and the party as well? It's a clear vote of no confidence in the TFC. He's mm -hmm. the founder uh, and he has closed that chapter. Mm -hmm. And he laid bare his reasons. That number one, the state has used the courts to capture and control the triple C. Mm -hmm. Secondly, um, um, it's also that it is no longer a vehicle of choice by citizens because it had been hijacked by criminals. You know that Sengezo is raking havoc in that thing. In fact, it is very sad because people who were elected by ordinary people are now forced to be a loyalty to someone whom they don't know. You can ask ordinary people. You are a journalist. You never quote him in the studio before he started writing his letter. You never wrote about him because he was not part of the leadership collective. Honorable Wende is better. We, we, we knew him. He was part of the leadership collective. We, 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 people know him. If it was him, you would have said, no, no, no. Uh, 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 maybe there are issues. But this one was not part and parcel. The only thing he has is a picture in a rally sitting uh, in, 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 in the crowd there. That is his only claim to, to Triple C. Mm. In a rally that had more than 30,000 people, that is his only claim, and the court has respected uh, uh, that decision very sad mm. uh, in, in the case of Zimbabwe. So how successful have, you, uh, have been your, your tours so far after Triple C uh, President Nelson Chamisa resigned from the party? Are you still um, going on with the, the tours? We, are, we have concluded our tours across the country. We are impressed, uh, DJ Ola, mm -hmm. in the face of assault to the authentic voices in the country that people continue to affirm this unequivocal position mm -hmm. that we are going to follow President Chamisa. One lady said to me, a young man, even if this so-called partyless party becomes the party, we are going to join the partyless party. Uh, what that means uh, metaphorically they are affirming that they are going to follow President Chamis. Mm. They are not going to follow uh, Ostalos. They are not going to follow a uh, 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 Welshman or, or Tendai or any. They are going to follow Advocate Nelson. It's a position from ordinary people. Mm. They are saying where Chamisa will go is where we will go. They've affirmed that position that uh, President Chamis, we've heard you. We await for you to announce to us what your next step will be. Once you announce, when you tell us that it's going to be the new home, mm -hmm. we are going to join you in the new home. Uh, and on, we are uh, wait for that. Signal. On February 4, Ostelis, in Manigaland, during one of your tours, uh, you said, and I quote, many people think that uh, Chamisa has quit politics or that he, is no longer uh, he no longer represents uh, uh, the wishes of the masses. Not at all. Chamisa left the Triple C because that part is now controlled and taken over by Zanpiaf. Uh, in the next few days, we will advise people where to find Chamisa's new home. Most people in Manigaland told us uh, that uh, they are very clear on one thing. Wherever Chamisa uh, goes, they will go with him. Close a court. So were you speaking on behalf of uh, Nelson Chamisa and uh, also hinting on the new party or movement? Uh, can you shed more light on this? Look, uh, we all read the letter of President Chamisa. So I spoke uh, on that letter. And very clearly, President Chamisa put those reasons in writing mm -hmm. that have left Triple C. It has been hijacked by ZANU PF. Mm -hmm. In fact, that part is now controlled in Chongwe Corner. Look at Sengizu. He's controlled by men in scarf. That is the his security detail. A man putting on a scarf. You know what the scarf represents in our body? It represents politics. what? Uh, it, it represents the other part. We don't wear the scarf. But there are two the, dominant the part parties. doesn't have a party logo. Look, it does have two, uh, Zimbabwe colors. There are two dominant political parties in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the ZANU-PF party, their members mm -hmm. wear a scarf. Democratic Zimbabweans don't wear a scarf. Mm -hmm. 
and the thing is so chabangu security detail are men and women who are putting on a scarf mm -hmm. it tells the story what i mean is that i confirmed to zimbabweans that the triple c is no longer a party that is led by president chamis mm -hmm. and he put it on the statement number two i confirmed that citizens because when we interface with them we give them an opportunity to give the give us feedback, feedback. And when we gave them an opportunity to speak, they said to us, go and make it known to the world mm -hmm. that we, the citizens in Mutare, in Manikaland province, and Zimbabwe in general, will follow Advocate Nelson Chamisa to the new. Mm -hmm. Because it is without a doubt to Zimbabwean citizens and to some of us mm -hmm. that President Chamisa has not quit politics, but he has quit the triple C. Mm -hmm. And therefore, in a time that is he finds necessary. He's going to announce his next step. And all of us are going to have a clear Damascus moment to join the new. Uh, what is the Blue mov Movement uh, all about, uh, Osalos? Is it a political party? Uh, when is it going to be launched? Look, uh, the Blue Movement is a term that has been used by ordinary people to represent those citizens that associate with President Chamisa. Mm -hmm. There is no political party called the Blue Movement. In fact, when, when I posted on my ex that the democratic alternative in Zimbabwe is led by President Chamisa, I put a picture with a blue on its background. Mm -hmm. And it became, uh, Twitter became frenzy. Uh, and, and people then started to galvanize around that. So it, it, it has just been, a, it's a momentum. It's not a political party. Mm -hmm. It's a momentum by citizens. Mm -hmm who associate with President Jamis, but they await, and they underline, they await President Jamis to announce the strategic direction and vision mm -hmm. to take Zimbabwe forward. And all those people that you see who call themselves the Blue Movement, mm -hmm. uh, all of them are people that support Advocate Nelson Jamis. And why, citizens... Why, why, why are they putting on blue uh, clothes? It, it is uh, to, to them, to the citizens, was, to the citizen, it is a galvanizing color. It is a color that they say, for now we are going to be stationed here. We are not orphaned. We are citizens. I, I even saw uh, this Chavis. guy called Babawe Shanduko uh, wearing a new gown, a blue gown. This is a citizen's project, Ola. Is it a statement? It's, Maybe it's, is it something, is it a statement or is it uh, a way of telling us that uh, we will be using uh, the blue so that maybe people get, get used to it now? This is a position by citizens. Mm -hmm. It's a way of expressing their collective support and loyalty to President Chamis. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, we're going to do it packed here in what they are calling the Blue Movement. Mm -hmm. It's the ordinary people. I, I started seeing it when we went to Mashola in the East. That's when I started to see people saying, we are the Blue Movement, we are the Blue Train. And the citizens are ahead of some of us. Mm -hmm. who, who, and they are very clear, they are organized uh, below them. Let, let me ask you this question, uh, Osteros. Give it a chance. Let's say this whatever you call it, blue movement, uh, give it a chance, maybe it's now a political party. Uh, do you think uh, the strategic ambiguity, which was the issue in the then Triple uh, C party, is a way to go again, or it's a, it was a mistake? What's your take? Uh, Probably as, as a member, <laughs> are you going to follow, or are you going to then say, ah, guys, let's reinforce it again, the strategic uh, ambiguity, or is it, mm, guys, Look, let me start by maybe unpacking. You see, as politicians, we campaign in poetry mm -hmm. and govern in prose. So when we're in rallies, there are ways we express ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when we're in boardrooms, there are ways we express ourselves. In boardrooms, we, 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 we look at things based on facts and data and empirical evidence. But you don't need that in a rally. Mm -hmm. It informs you, but you don't communicate with the data and figures. People sleep in a rally. <laughs> so there are people who don't understand, who think that when we're talking about strategic ambiguity, we meant that when we operate, our things are ambiguous. Mm -hmm. That's not factual. Mm. When we're op operating in a boardroom and on the ground, we're very certain and detailed and scientific and organic in the way we're organizing ourselves. Mm -hmm. But we couldn't 
give that information. No, but when you say it enemy. wasn't uh, factual, maybe you might be wrong there. Was uh, uh, we were told that uh, you are not going to know, uh, you are not, you are not, we are not going to tell you our secretary general. We are not going to tell you who is, is, is in charge of what. Of course. Yes. Yeah, so it was, uh, it was factual. That's what I'm saying. That mm. we, we, we were very ambiguous. Mm -hmm in our pronouncing our strategies and tactics mm -hmm. because of the nature of the regime that we're dealing with. But in our operational framework, I want you to understand the two different platforms. Mm -hmm. There's a platform where we communicate. Mm -hmm. That is a public platform. Yes. There is a platform where we plan and execute things. Mm -hmm. When we met in the Citizen National Assembly, as an example, mm -hmm. there was no confusion on who is who. Yeah. All of us knew. That's why I wouldn't stand up in a meeting and say, I'm now holding fans. Mm -hmm. Because we knew that there's someone uh, mandated to hold fans. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't wake up in the same meeting and say, I'm now the master of ceremony. Mm -hmm. Or I'm now chairing the meeting. Because in our meetings, there was clarity in who chairs the meeting. Mm -hmm. Who does an opening prayer? Who collects the data? Mm -hmm. Who dismisses people? Mm -hmm. So there was no ambiguity within. But we made sure that in our communication, there is sufficient mm -hmm. A, 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 a ambiguity to the level extent that we don't give information mm -hmm. to our opponents. Okay. So what I'm saying to you is a revelation mm -hmm. so that you understand that we're very ambiguous in the way we're communicating mm -hmm. for the benefit and, prote and protection of our movement. Mm -hmm. But we have clarity and certainty when we're operating on our day-to-day -day because that certainty is what made us to get more than uh, uh, 32 seats we became effectively the government in the cities. Mm -hmm. and but, Zanu, but, but any uh, any lessons learned from, from that uh, ambiguous move? Look, there are lessons for everything, Ola. What the, what what, the, what what lessons? The, 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 uh, the, I mean, there are there's a, there's a document that we are producing, mm -hmm. what we call the raw data, and hopefully we are going to share with it. It has all the information of the lessons. Mm -hmm. It's an audit of the 2023 election. We did it in 2018. We, we did it in 2023, now in the new movement. Mm -hmm. So there are so many lessons. There are lessons about how we should dress. Mm -hmm. There are lessons about how we must speak. There are lessons about uh, how we conducted our, our internal uh, uh, elections mm -hmm. of selecting uh, selections of candidates. Mm -hmm. There are lessons about the period that we took to do certain things. Mm -hmm. And there are great lessons there are things that so many things that we are going to carry yes. going forward mm -hmm. that were a star for us. There are so many success stories. For example, we're able to stop the two thirds majority. It's mm -hmm. a success story in parliament. Mm -hmm. So it, it confirms the success of our candidate selection process. There are great lessons about how we were able to deploy young people mm -hmm. with the youngest mayor in Masungo, youngest mayor in Epworth, first female mayor in, in, in different parts of the mm -hmm. country. So we have so many successes, but we have so many lessons. And the raw data is a document that captures all these things. Yeah, what maybe we did well and what while we we're still waiting for the for the for the document, um, maybe one or two lessons you learned from from the previous uh, mistakes. Look, uh, there are so many mistakes. One of the mistakes that we learned is that um, never work with people who want to bring their own vision. Mm -hmm. When there is a in in any organization, all. I used to work for Econet. There is one vision, mm -hmm. the, and that vision is known to everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Douglas Mboni does not come with this vision. Mm -hmm. He executes the vision of the owner. I was working in the scholarship department. You wouldn't wake up and start to say, no, 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 we are now giving scholarships uh, to journalists. Mm -hmm. The vision says we give scholarship to, to students with high grades, mm -hmm. nothing less, nothing more. Mm -hmm. You can't change that, you see. It was so. So in in a political party, it's the same. Mm -hmm. you, you you can't have two visions. Once you have two visions, that is division. Mm -hmm. So our greatest lesson is that we must never work with the people who want to bring their own vision. Mm -hmm. When there's a vision, where do you get a vision? A vision. They must be a visionary. Mm -hmm. Who is a visionary? And that person becomes the president. If I'm the spokesperson, I'm not in charge of crafting the vision. Mm -hmm. I'm in charge of executing the vision. Mm -hmm. That is my job. So that's why I become a missionary. So in this case, who can so, so we that is the, uh, on, on, on vision? So so many people. Mm -hmm. President Jamisa was surrounded by people. In fact, I think there were four visions. Maybe we can, we, we can yeah. name drop here. 
No, no, I, I wouldn't want it to, to, to name people. Uh -huh. they, I, I think they, say, they still have some semblance of dignity. Okay. And very soon we are going to see them. Mm -hmm. How are we going to see them? Uh, in fact, the, 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 the first ones are those who have said we are now vice presidents. Mm -hmm. We're going to be rotating. There are three. They can't fill the position of president. Chairman. They can't have one person. Because the other one is his own vision. The other is his own vision. And the other is. So they say, you come with your vision for two weeks. I'll come with my vision for two weeks. And the other one also is going to start also his part with students and other yeah. young people. Uh, 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 and you, I think you hate him. Mm -hmm. He now has a, a unique political ascent. Mm -hmm. He also has his own vision. Yeah. So, so, so you can't lead a struggle with parallel visions. There must be one solid vision. But the vision are consults missionaries and ordinary people in the crafting of the vision, which he becomes a custodian of. Number, let's say number two is that never work with people who are motivated mm -hmm. by positions, not propositions. Mm -hmm. We must be in the arena of politics to be motivated by propositions mm -hmm. to change the lives of our people, mm -hmm. not positions. So what's your relationship with uh, Job Scala now? Um, you know, he, he, uh, was he correct, you know, uh, Ostados, when he said the party neglected him uh, and how do you relate uh, with him as a friend or as a foe? Look, uh, I, I worked with the Honorable uh, Scala mm -hmm. um, when we were student leaders, mm -hmm. would interface with them as former student leaders mm -hmm. and people who had walked the road before us. Uh, when we also went to the FDC, we were together as our leader, someone whom we, I hold even up to this very day mm -hmm. with high regard. Um, and, and, and when he was in prison, you can check my uh, uh, personal micro-blogging sites. Mm -hmm. And even that of the organization then would do countdowns, would mobilize our people to go to his court because the first and most important thing was solidarity. Mm -hmm. The second thing is that we did so much I'll, I'll, I'll say to you all, uh, because mm -hmm. I've seen this on the internet, yeah. people say, no, I accompanied President Chamisa several times. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember at some time when we went to Chitumbiza, uh, to Honorable Scala's house, and, and we started taking pictures. We were shouted by the president mm -hmm. that, look, this is not a, a show. I'm not here to, 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 to look for limelight. Job Scala is a comrade. Mm -hmm. He's in prison. And where do you want to take these pictures to? Is his family, they are minors. We thought that the president didn't understand. We are communicators. We yeah. felt that is important to share with the people. Mm -hmm. But the president reprimanded us. Mm -hmm. I saw the president handing over his own personal money mm -hmm. to, to Honorable Scala, his wife. I saw it with my own eyes. I couldn't speak about it because we're not allowed to speak about all these things. President Jamisa said, you can't do things for the purpose of the media. Mm -hmm. We respected his view then. But it is disingenuous for anyone today to say, there was solid support. I went, when we had a presidential dinner, uh, uh, there were groceries that were bought by the president. Mm -hmm. The man was supposed to be given to President Jamisa. Mm -hmm. And President Jamisa said, I've received the man, but the, all this man go and buy groceries for the less privileged mm -hmm. and give it to as Christmas hampers. Mm -hmm. We gave Christmas hampers. And he said, all these groceries that were put on the side must be delivered to Honorable Scala's house. Mm -hmm. All these were gestures of solid. I was arrested in the group in maximum prison. Mm -hmm. I was abducted and tortured. I never received even a yogurt from my party. I, 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 I don't even recall. I only obviously saw people, few people who came to my, to my, to my cell. Mm -hmm. President Twangrai then came to our uh, prison. He was not allowed. We only hated it from prison because mm -hmm. that President Jamisa was here to see you. But I knew that I was so junior in the party, even if he he was allowed, he wasn't going to speak to me. Mm -hmm. But I never had issues because I understood that he's targeted. Mm -hmm. I accompanied President Chamisa to group in maximum prison more than four times. He was not allowed to see Honorable Scala. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, we actually wrote a letter to the Commissioner General of the Police to say, through our lawyer, Ope Shaba, to say, allow us, because the prison said we must be approved by the headquarters mm -hmm. to see Honorable Scala. President Chamisa, in all his rallies, you will speak in particular about Scala. I was arrested, my brother, when we were in the MDC. Mm -hmm. I was arrested even during the campaign. I did not hear President Chamisa. In fact, I'm going to even speak to him to say, Mr. President, say, I now also have a grievance. Because when I was arrested, I was your MP candidate. Mm -hmm. I was your party's deputy spokesperson. 
You never spoke about my arrest. You see, but he spoke in all these rallies. He spoke about on the scala. I accompanied President Chamisa to meet diplomats. Mm -hmm. His one signature case was the release of one of his color. Mm -hmm. He wrote letters to Sadak. He wrote letters to the African Union. He wrote letters to the different observer mission. The case of Honorable Kala was at the center of the political articulation of President Chamisa, wherever he met with them. So what, what, what's your take on the allegations that uh, the C never supported him during his 595 days uh, of incarceration? You know, how far true is that? Look, these are naysayers. Mm -hmm. Who regime uh, naysayers who obviously want to sponsor that um, you know uh, uh, contradiction. Uh, these things are on record, all that, that I'm, not, I'm talking about. Yeah. These are not things that are secretive. Mm -hmm. You know that the Youth Assembly of the C went in court uh, to to protest mm -hmm. in in demands of one scala. Different means were used to to demand the release of one rep scala. So I, I have no doubt in my mind that there was so much that was done. Mm -hmm. There might be some people who might not be happy, who might have wanted us to do it differently, but in our hearts of hearts, we did everything possible to do. In fact, including President Chamisa writing to, to Mr. Mnangagu, mm -hmm. on the case of Honorable Scala, what else, Honorable Ola, under the sun, mm -hmm. what else would have been done? We, we, we are not jailbreakers. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have done Everything, I, I remember, and I can share you my screenshot of my phone, the dominant posters that were designed by my communication guys were countdown days and posters uh, of We Were Wednesday and different activities mm -hmm. that were doing in demand of uh, the release of one report. During an interview of uh, Job Scala by Trevor Ngube, uh, he accused the, op or the opposition of not maturing you know, from student politics, uh, following that uh, a lot of opposition leaders are former uh, members of our students' union. What's your take on this? Look, uh, I've seen that exhausted narrative from ZANPF. Um, it's an ageist uh, narrative because it tries to um, have a disdain on young people on the virtue of their participation mm -hmm. in student activism. I think our participation in politics is not based on, on our participation in the Students' mm -hmm. Union. It is based on our feeling that it is a patriotic necessity and that we have a burning desire to see a country that has changed. My problem is a, a sense of entitlement mm -hmm. by uh, people in our, our opponents who think that probably you, you, you have not generated sufficient a, a capacity to lead on the basis of that you are young. The world is moving on, Ola. One can be a hero in two struggles. Even if you to wake up with a Chitepo today, Chitepo cannot be a hero of the a, a, a Kuku generation struggles. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't be able to understand artificial intelligence. A Hepe Chitepo or Josama Gamba Tungukara or Joshua Ngomo. Even if you had to wake them up from their grave, they can't be the hero of the transformation struggle. Mm. Times have moved. Society has to move. And it can't be a prison that we're not there in the liberation struggle or you're not there in some stage. We must open up a platform for the future and we must build a future. The world is mm. young. Mm. Look at Europe. Look at all the different countries in the world. The mm. world is moving on and we are stuck in name calling others on the basis of their past. So, uh, you know what, uh, so non-notable uh, leaders uh, from your movement, you know, attended the more blessing Ali's uh, funeral. Uh, what could have uh, caused that or did not want maybe your presence to be uh, misconstrued, you know, as re rendering support for Job Scala? For long, you have campaigned against Ali's death as a victim of political violence. However, your failure to attend her burial proceedings say otherwise. Was she ever a Triple C member? Look, um, more blessing, Ali was a member of the Triple C. Um, and and uh, that's why you saw that Zimbabweans came in their large numbers mm -hmm. to send their um, final send off to more blessing, Ali. Something that we have sent our gratitude to, mm -hmm. to Zimbabweans. Um, there are uh, people that attended uh, the, 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 the funeral, mm -hmm. um, they are notable names. Yeah. Um, remember also that the process happened in the same day mm -hmm. with the Bishop Messiah uh, funeral, and at the same day we had a meeting 
in Gwanda. So mm -hmm. there were three dominant programs on the same day. Mm -hmm. I was in Gwanda in a meeting that could not be postponed. Mm -hmm. Other leaders were in Bishop Masaya, other leaders attended mm -hmm. a more blessing Ali as Finn. And we saw a bit of a probably fight, people fighting at the funeral. Uh, some saying we belong to um, uh, Advocate Chamisa's movement. Some saying we uh, we belong to Job Scholars movement. You know, what's the position? No one in this country who supports and follows President Chamisa would use violence as a way of expression. I've no doubt in my mind that uh, such individual gets sponsored. It's not new in our politics, Ola. When we're in the MDC with our cards printed, mm -hmm and people using our cars to name call others, uh, to threaten people and so forth, in the name of our leader then, uh, President Swangrai. And when we went to the MDC Alliance under President Chamisa, the same happened. It, it always happened, uh, people tarnish. I can tell you without doubt that President Chamisa has condemned uh, violence in different occasions. Mm -hmm. And all of us who have worked with him know his persuasion around these issues. And it is not possible for anyone who's attended a meeting of President Chamis mm -hmm. as an even as an ordinary person who would want to use their hands against even a fellow support. Mm. Where's it to, to those whom we differ with us? We have had so many people who have provoked the President Chamis mm -hmm. to use violence as a way to, to dislodge the regime. He has maintained his non-violent and peaceful stance. And many people have condemned him. If you know mm -hmm. that people call him a pastor, and so forth, on the basis that he uses the envelope of peace. Mm -hmm. He has actually been uh, persecuted on the basis that in the face of all extreme provocation, he continues to push the envelope of peace. Mm -hmm. Even if when some of us lose patience to say, why are we remaining peaceful? Mm -hmm. He has said to some of us, his lieutenant, mm -hmm. you, cannot, you cannot cross this line. Mm -hmm. So it is not possible for anyone who has followed President Chamis let alone who says I'm his supporter or the member of his organization mm -hmm. who can use violence. So they, those people that, uh, do not belong to you. It is not possible. Okay. So uh, in a story by the Zimbabwe Mail of uh, March 1, uh, it's reported uh, that, uh, in a court, the embattled uh, former Triple C leader, Nelson Chamisa, has claimed that he is not involved with any current political organization or movement. Oh, how far true are these, uh, you know, claims? M maybe before you answer that one, uh, this was Chamisa's statement uh, in a court. In fact, the irony of the application is that since I resigned as a leader uh, of the Triple C for uh, for the uh, Triple C, the applicant and the respondent to the founding of David uh, have continued to use my face on their uh, preferred logo. I wish to reiterate that I have no current special association with any color, any political organization, or any movement. Close quote. So how far true are these, you know, rumors that you are, you have been influencing almost every decision that, uh, you know, Chamisa has made with regards to the opposition politics? <laughs> Look, uh, President Chamisa uh, Ola has so many advisors. Um, of quality and substance mm. and credibility. I've had a privilege to, at some stage, to just witness when we're doing the documentary, the president, mm -hmm. to witness him and his team um, whenever he makes decisions. Mm -hmm. And these are people with credentials. These are people of substance. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are grey-haired people uh, and people with different experiences in our body politic. Mm -hmm. So it is not possible to have people like myself um, uh, dubbed his advisors. Mm -hmm. I'm not an advisor. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an executor. I, I have got the mandate. So you don't influence... I don't influence... Uh, uh, President or anything. Chamisa. So what about the uh, that statement that I read for you? Look, President Chamisa was taken to court uh, uh, by uh, uh, the same uh, 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 mm -hmm. uh, uh they challenged him that he was in control of some office. Mm -hmm. Made it very clear that I, I, I don't have association. These people have said to him, "You are not a leader. Mm -hmm. You don't lead us. You are a detector. We don't believe in you. We believe in the three presidents." But the three presidents can't put their faces there. 
they still want to use President Chamisa's face, even if three of them are presidents. Mm -hmm. They don't want to use their beautiful faces. They want to use that of a detector. So that is the irony about these people. And he expressed himself clearly in the court that, look, I have no association with that part. And I wish and I pray that the Honorable Court can actually give me a spoiling order against these people. Senge Zuchabong went to the Senate to be sworn in as a senator. He's using a letterhead with the face of President Chamisa. Because alone Senge Zuchabong is an entity. He, 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 some, some of these but people... But they're, they're claiming that um, the party logo is the official logo with his face. That, that is, they are eye historic. Even, yeah. That is eye historic because the triple C, the official look of the triple C was a, 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 a sign, a triple C mm -hmm. with a, a black dot in the center. That is the look of the triple C. The, the, the thing with the face of President Chamis is actually a symbol mm -hmm. which was used for the purpose of an election. Mm -hmm. It is not a party look. Mm -hmm. The triple C logo has no face, but these people now, because they are not part of triple C, mm. they were never part of triple C. So they don't know that the triple C in its website and all these other things that were developing as communication department mm -hmm. didn't have a logo with the president. In fact, you can go even public. I communicated by then as a deputy spokesperson, and Fazai is our spokesperson, that this is the logo of the triple C, and this is the election symbol. But they don't know that. That's why in their correspondence, they put the face of President Chavez. Mm. His face was never in the official correspondence of the tribu C. There was, um, it was a symbol. There was a comment on X by Charlton Wende while responding to Willa Dama Zimbamuto, who had described you know, your blue movement as a fictitious and deceptive factional agenda. So Wende then said, and I quote, this is what is happening and a correct assessment of what is happening. People who store money for elections, uh, for election agents, are the ones driving this deception. Did you guys steal the party's money? Look, uh, we, I said it very clear when this issue was asked to me by journalists who don't hold funds. Uh, there is no way. Funds is not my remit. Mm -hmm. My remit is journalists and, and meeting the crowd. That's my remit. Mm -hmm. That's my official mandate. No one talks to me uh, in the triple C about issues of my hand. Mm -hmm. There are people designated with that responsibility. And it is no way in the office of the deputy mm -hmm. uh, spokesperson. And then the issue of factions. We, we, the, the President Chamisa left a uh, triple C. So they can only be a faction if the party is there. There's no party now. Mm -hmm. So they can't be factions. Uh, and, and that's why we later had a conversation with the youngster to communicate his issues and, mm -hmm. and, and what he meant by the tweet was it was misconstrued, misunderstood, and people were very agitated. I went to across the country, people were agitated, and to explain himself to the citizens, mm -hmm. to say this is what I meant, and so forth. And, and that's why we then had to have him in some of these programs where he had to clarify to people with questions about his tweet. And like I said, there's nothing called the blue movement. Mm -hmm. what, what is there are citizens organizing themselves. Mm -hmm. And we are unequivocally driving that momentum. Mm -hmm. And that momentum only we are driving it with the mandate from the people, mm -hmm. without fear, without hesitation. It is we are doing so on behalf of the oppressed people of our country. Mm -hmm. And we have we have no regrets about so they were executing just, um, that responsibility. You know, allegations. There were there were no allegations. Mm -hmm. There were there were just tweets. Okay. Uh, and, and, and those tweets it had those people to have them corrected and mm -hmm. so forth. And in fact, for us, there was nothing to correct because they were not directed at us. Mm -hmm. But when people asked it in relation to me in particular, mm -hmm. I made it very clear that it's not my remit. So I have no conversation that includes That's those clear. issues, but there are people that deal with it. So what are your thoughts on the current state of politics in our country? I think that there is a huge crisis in Zimbabwe, a crisis that is born out of uh, how we conduct elections. Elections always from time to time leave Zimbabwean society divided than united. It has set this extremely binary uh, interpretation of political realities, either you are this or that. So our people are extremely divided on the basis of politics. And politics is because of the way we conduct the election. I believe that we must uh, uh, deal with the, the way we conduct the elections. And the only way to do it is that we must have, as Zimbabweans, and that's why when we were calling for a dialogue, it was a dialogue on the basis of how do we resolve 
this vicious cycle of disputed election. Mm -hmm. We converse about critical reforms. We converse about the critical things that bind us together as a nation. So that when we go into an election, whether it is a triple C or a ZAP or a ZANPF country that wins, all of us must, must say congratulations. Mm -hmm. And we can only do that if we are satisfied about the process. So that is what we must deal with. We believe that we must conduct an election that is credible, an election that is fair in the hands of everyone. Mm -hmm. The 2023 election is even worse, but it is no longer the opposition having complaints. It is SATAC, it's the African Union and the, and the European Union who are saying the elections were not proper. Mm -hmm. So what we must do is we must fix how we conduct election. Once we do that, we have cured the permanent problem mm -hmm. that has been arresting our country for the past four decades. Okay. How do you see yourself, um, I mean, contributing to the political discourse in Zimbabwe moving forward? Uh, I see myself, um, I really speak on, it's the first time in an interview to go into an interview where I speak about myself. Yes. Um, most of the time I speak on behalf of the people mm -hmm. and I really speak about, you know, my personal interest yes. because I've no such mandate, but I see myself, I see myself uh, contributing to the development of the alternative mm -hmm. in this country. Yeah, I'm I'm not a person who's motivated all uh, by positions. I've seen it with the 99 generation. Mm -hmm. The 99 generation, like the 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 uh, uh, liberation generation. It's got this underlining feeling that we started this, we founded this. And it's not all of them. It's, it's a few individuals. Mm -hmm. There are so many progressives in that class, mm -hmm. so many of them. I've met with veterans who are very progressive in this country. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about some, these are elements within the liberation generation who get so much fixated in positions that because we fought. So you, you, you guys, what is special about being a, a president what is special about being a minister you, you just walk around cutting ribbons there is nothing extraordinary or like you yourself can wake up being the president of this country i can tell you there is nothing extraordinary about being a, a head of state or being a minister is even worse uh, 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 when you become a minister or np i used to see some of these uh, uh, our our Zanpef mps in parliament most of them to show that they know that there is nothing special they go to parliament, especially the new building, because there's breakfast there, there's lunch, there are salads there. They go there, they queue, they take coffee and bread. They go to parliament, they sleep. I saw, they, I, I, they, I saw uh, one of your, maybe some of your MPs as well sleeping in the parliament. I haven't seen a, 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 any a MP mm -hmm. when during a debate uh, sleeping in parliament. Mm -hmm. But I witnessed myself, a, 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 a ZANU PF members of parliament, sleeping during discourses of national importance mm -hmm. during my stay in parliament. Mm -hmm. So it shows that to them, they know that beyond the getting coupons and, and flashing cars, mm -hmm. there's nothing extraordinary about being an MP. I, I grew up in the ghetto, I became an MP. There is nothing special about being an MP. I say this in relation to positions. Mm -hmm. I don't see myself occupying uh, important positions. Mm -hmm. If I'm asked today where I want to go, I don't want to be deployed in an important political position. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be deployed where the appointing authority or the voters or the members would see me fit in terms of my capabilities. Mm -hmm. And I'm sufficient and I'm, I'm happy where I'll be deployed. I'm not motivated and I hate to speak about myself because I always want to speak about the collective. Yes. I have so much disdain about people who are motivated by position. Mm -hmm. I think that we must be motivated by the agenda to see change mm -hmm. in our country. As long as we have a collective team that is able to change our bread and butter situation, mm -hmm. then all of us should be happy. All of us can go to the academy, which I think I'll, I'll retire to. So in uh, conclusion, uh, Comrade Rostolos, would you encourage youth to be active in uh, politics? I'll encourage young people to participate actively in the politics of our country for fundamentally the following reasons. Number one, you cannot allow the present to hold the future in suffocation. Young people are the major victims of the crisis in our country. 97% of young people are jobless. Mm -hmm. So I encourage the participation of young people. Because if you don't, someone else is deciding their mm -hmm. future. 
I, I was in parliament during budget processes. The, the Minister of Finance, Eola, is borrowing on, on behalf of the current generation mm -hmm. and on behalf of the future generations. All of us, me and you, are going to service a domestic and external debt, which we don't know where, where the money went to. Mm -hmm. Currently, we are servicing a debt to the Bank of Brazil, Bank of England, uh, and, 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 and uh, World Bank and the IMF. A debt that was borrowed by Mugabe, not to uh, feed our people, mm -hmm. but to thwart uh, opposition then as was led by Tsongra. Mm -hmm. So I encourage young people to participate. Not everyone obviously can be so direct, but it is important to be conscious, simple things. Just exercise your right to vote. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether you vote for President Yamisa or for Nkosana Moyo or for, for Kisnot Mukwash, mm -hmm. but exercise that right. You know why? When you vote tomorrow, when they don't account, you're able to call them. Mm -hmm. what, why it is difficult for some of us to, to perform badly is because people call us to account. Mm -hmm. They say, you, Ostalos, we gave you this mandate. So mm -hmm. I can't claim that I did it on my own. There are people who become stockholders. Yes. So, so you must say when you are underpaid, mm -hmm. when teachers are not paid, when they voted, they voting, they know that we voted for a government. And the government must give us a salary above what a poverty time like. When soldiers get a salary be, below PDL, they must do so because they say we have voted for a government. Mm -hmm. And that government must account. That does not apply only now. It applies to present and to the future. Mm -hmm. In that way, we are able to build politicians that account to their people. Mm. People must not have, particularly young people, must not be bought by scars and, and money. Take the money coming from the politician. Mm. I said to the youngsters, eh, eh, this guy stole from the poor. He's now giving eh, cars and flashing things to, to the same oppressed people. Take it. Because it was taken from taxpayers' money in a case they had eh, against a parastate. So it is taxpayers' money. It is not their money. It's not hard-end money. It's not money that has been worked for. They can clamor, they can say whatever they want. It's not hard end money, it's not authentic. It's money that is born out of looting of taxpayers' money. You know of the Zeta, Zeta scandal. And I wouldn't want to go there. But young people now, you, you cannot wake up thinking that there's a miracle that is going to come from these uh, fake prophets. One of them was falling a stage there. All those clowns, they can't be an inspiration to young people. You can't be inspired by thieves. You can be inspired by people who have not worked. You must work. You must wake up in the morning, Ola, and go to your workstation I, at are seven. You, I, all right, I understand. But are you saying we don't have millionaires in Zimbabwe? We have authentic millionaires. Mm -hmm. Drive Masio is a legitimate billionaire mm -hmm. in this country. We have people who have credible wealth in this country. Mm -hmm. It's unquestionable, Ola. It doesn't need you to wear a scarf mm -hmm. to be a millionaire. And we know those who have stolen funds. I don't need to say their names because obviously they, they would invoke They've said bad things about myself. I've not sued them because mm -hmm. they are clowns, they are charlatans, and they're not worth the political discourse that some of us are involved in. What's, but I can what's tell your, what, you too, I want to ask you something uh, before we conclude, um, uh, Comrade Rosales, about the sanctions removal. What did I, I saw the, the statement from the US. Look, I'm doing my PhD in political science, mm -hmm. and I argued and I said to Nick yesterday, Nick, a, a Famba state the state. You are not an intellectual. You, you, you don't have capacity to comprehend the proclamation by the U.S., let alone any foreign policy by any country. You are just a tea boy. You wait for some of us who have gone to school to interpret these things to you. Mm -hmm. What the U.S. has done is to, they've not affected Isidera. They've not changed anything because I am, a, a, a student of modern scientific thought, I know that even if President Jamisa become a president today, he would not change the position of sanctions overnight. Mm -hmm. If President Jamisa becomes a president today, it will take more than three years, if not the whole of first term, leading to the second term, if people give him, which is most likely. It will take him more than five years for the process of the U.S. to change the day. Mm -hmm. Because it is an act of U.S. Congress. It take processes, it will take hearings, it will take a vote from both houses in the U.S. Congress. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether the president is DJ Ola or any other person. Sanctions will not go tomorrow. So that's why I was shocked by 
people who were camping in the U.S. embassy. It's, sanctions are not a demon that you can uh, 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 cast out through slogans. So you say you, there's a the same, process. Uh, same thing. Uh, uh, no change there. It's, it's actually more difficult now because you you have got individuals now. Mm -hmm. It is now more specific. It removes the political scapegoat that this thing affects ordinary people because now business, which is good now, because now business it means people who are doing Amazon are now going to be able to, to do business. Mm -hmm. So it's no longer going to affect ordinary business people. It's not going to affect the specific individuals who have been listed for violating human rights in Zimbabwe. So it is now more specific. It is no longer affecting an ordinary person. It is now affecting people who have been listed there. Uh, who have issues, and they know Olam. We have said it very clear as, as the alternative. And I'll say it today for avoidance of doubt. We want sanctions gone. And I want to repeat this. We want sanctions gone. Mm -hmm. And there is a process, because it is part and parcel of our broad international relations program of action mm -hmm. when we govern, that we must re-engage. We must genuinely renegotiate our debt with the uh, 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 Bretton Institution. But uh, what's so the it, take? It, because it, because it right now, um, I see uh, President uh, Managagwa, uh, he's got uh, this re-engagement policy. Look, it's not uh, Ola. It's not about hiring lobbyists and writing 50 pages document and saying about it in rallies. No, no, no. It's a process, Ola. It's not a... It's, it's science. It's not ontological. You can feel it, you can touch it. You, you just have to say, what are the issues? Number one, human rights violation. Just tick that box. Do well in your country. It's a domestic issue rather than a foreign policy issue. That most people don't know. I did a master's in international relations, Ola. Mm -hmm. And I argued with sufficient uh, academic evidence that sanctions are not a foreign policy issue, but are a domestic issue. How do we resolve them? One, let's, how, let's, let's resolve how we deal with each other. When someone commits a crime, let the law take its course. Let's not abuse the judiciary. Let's not abuse the opposition. Let's not give power to these impositors. Let's respect the will of the people. Number two, let's make sure that we don't borrow for the purpose of corruption. Mm -hmm. Let's not borrow to fund our parasitic institutions. And all these documents all are not evidence that is from the opposition. Mm -hmm. The first evidence of this is the Auditor General, which is the state institution. That shows us how much we have lost as a country to corruption. So we have, have to solve those issues. Do you know, Ola, that we lose billions of dollars on illicit financial flows? These are not statistics from opposition or from the West or from the East. They are from government agencies that tell us how corrupt the government institutions are. It is from the Auditor General. And it is that basis that if we resolve these issues, we are ticking the boxes. Mm -hmm. Once we conduct our election, SATIC says we have done well, European Union says we have done well, we have ticked the box. Then from here, we have a, a delegation that comes from Zimbabwe. Go to this country and say, Washington, what is your problem with Zimbabwe? We have ticked the boxes, we have aligned our constitution. Why are we shutting down NGOs with this so-called draconian uh, uh, PVO or PO? Once we don't have those things, we say, look, we have ticked our boxes on aligning the constitution. We've protected journalists, we've protected activists, we've protected ordinary people, we've invested issues around abductions and torture of people. Everyone is happy. Zimbabweans are living free. In that way, you have the U.S. and all the members of the Hope and Go vote saying, ah, no, no, Zimbabwe is now a democratic country. It's not on the basis of their standards. No, no, no. Mm. It's on the basis of our constitutional standards. Once we are there, our country, I can tell you, Ola, can progress and most of the people that you see in politics mm -hmm. are going to quit politics because the country would have stabilized. No one would worry about politics. It's a tiresome game. Mm -hmm. It's a cumbersome game. No one likes uh, talking to people every day. No one likes coming to the studio. I'm doing my PhD now. I should be in a lecture room or running my own institution. I must not be spending time in youth rooms speaking about the challenges in our country. Mm. Once we build that society, everyone is going to go to their expertise and everyone's going to flourish. There's not going to be need of slogans. There's no hate. We can coexist. I can meet a ZANPF comrade and we talk together because you know why. We all belong to one country. But can you do it now? Maybe if you that meet is, a ZANPF guy, 
Would you guys have lunch together? That is the po- of course lunch is difficult. All our food is a problem <laughs> in our country. <laughs> but meeting and talking, we can. Do you have Zanu PF of friends? Of course. I, I, I wouldn't say I've got friends. I've people that I know mm-hmm. in Zanu PF. Yeah. Uh, I've people that I know in Zapu. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you guys talk. We can converse when we meet. When we're in Parliament, mm-hmm. we meet. We guide them. Mm-hmm. Most of these guys don't know what Parliament is all about. Who we'll guide them? No, my brother. You don't come here. We, no, no, I'm not talking about just. We we'll, we'll guide them. I'm, I'm we not talking about the political friendship. The just, of you know, just having this good conversation, like a phone call. Hi, guys. Of course, I want, I've got friends in Zanu. They will tell you when they meet hard times. <laughs> that look, our party is just slogans. No money for rent. Help me, and I'll help <laughs> you. We, we, we are one people. We are family. Okay, guys. Uh, that was uh, Ostalos. This is about here on uh, the All Us Seven podcast. You're on the spot. So um, maybe your your parting remarks and uh, yeah, as we, as we conclude. No, th- I thank you very much, Ola. It's a quite a unique interview uh, that I've never had mm-hmm. in my career as a young politician and a spokesperson of the people. I really appreciate it and I thank Zimbabweans. It's quite been a long uh, conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I will learn also as we converse. Yeah. Uh, we expect also to hear feedback from our people. Mm-hmm whom we value so much because they remain at the center of the struggle that we, we, we are prosecuting. I say to Zimbabweans, keep your eyes and ears open. Very soon we are going to speak. Thank you very much. Okay, we do not know what's going to come. But anyways, they are promising that say, guys, keep your eyes open. Uh, we are opening our eyes. Our eyes are wide open. Thank you so much for watching. My name is DJ Ola7 Owen. We're Kwame Alonda, the Chief Air Marshal here on the Ola7 podcast show. Until next time. Bye-bye. Mazimai, shakati betra nukuti, mufunge utiba na wechikoro, kana mwana kwa ano vaa nunga shungoti mai. Mai, andina chakadai, mai ndino jei. Saka se mazimai, taku gono kuku ya doi, tichi peke jado iredu, tirikutengesa, Marita to Garataka Bato Marimo. When you would have won our man, notice the kind of pair of people out of what you call Marie to get up and as Christmas and they want it. Kuto, Vurika Fungwa, Kuto notice Zimbabwe as a running mar. It's also Tisu to Kutazawish and this.